There's no such thing as pure freedom in this world. Even the wind cannot blow on forever. Alright. This version is almost over. Let's do Kaya's hangout. Shenanigans and sweet wine. Alright, for Ormus. Uh, it's okay to have a quest with him over there, but it would be fun if you messed with Diluc. Yeah, he never told us what he was doing over here on Pavonius' business. The wind rises. Squall and fury. The wind rises. <laughs> hey, little birdie. Don't feel down. Come and perch on my shoulder. <laughs> Don't be shy. I'll show you around town. Uh, that's not what this bird's call sounds like. Really? No wonder they never pay attention to me. Uh, forget it. I probably shouldn't be anthropomorphizing them anyway. Haven't seen you in some time. To which one of the Animo Archon's wins do I owe the honor? I guess your natural charisma didn't be here. Must be ordained by fate. Oh, uh -huh. is this your way of saying that you missed me? Since it wasn't meant to be with this little birdie, I'd better leave it alone. Let's take a walk, shall we? If you're wondering why I'm here, Jean's been worrying about trade safety recently. I discovered this when I unwittingly burst into her office to save the day. Another job involving long-distance travel falls to me. I suppose it's my own fault for having such a strong sense of duty. Is it because her legs are smaller that she walks slower? Oh. Still, on the bright side, business is now taken it's care of. And I have unused travel funds, so I was planning to... Oh. I want to chalk a little more. See if Baiju can keep Kundafar, up. Kundafar, we are in the middle of a war. Your place is at the front lines by my son's side. Pray tell, what provokes your unwarranted return to the palace? A matter of utmost importance, your majesty. Such that I must personally report it to you. There, Jupiter. Huh. Outdoor theater. Looks fun. Uh, uh, where were we just now? Travel expenses? And stop, Mr. Show? No, travel expenses. Uh, yes. Here's what I was thinking about the unused funds. Mm -hmm. Given that the acting Grand Master saw fit to allocate these funds to my trip in the first place, I think it's my responsibility to make sure that every last mora is put to good use. In other words... What do you say we find a way to spend the remaining budget? Perhaps a fancy meal at a nice restaurant? Or a river cruise that takes in the sights of Sumeru City? Or we could buy a few nice mementos to take home. Uh, isn't that embezzlement? I can't believe you're talking so openly about leaving it up to uh, public's expenses. Hey, no need to put it like that. Let's keep walking. We can consider it some more on the road. <laughs> The rules of the Knights of Favonia state that any and all expenditures during a business trip are counted as travel expenses. That's more than enough justification to live a little. Of course, with me being here on my own, it was looking like a wasted opportunity. But now that I've run into you, why don't we make this a joint trip? He's at a different speed now. You're always so busy. It's high time you gave yourself a proper break. 
Even the sharpest blade loses its edge if it's always in use. Regular maintenance is essential for reliable performance. And anyway, life is short, so we should make the most of the time we have. Right now is the perfect time to relax and enjoy ourselves. And who knows how many other chances we'll get. So come on, what do you say? Uh, we can spend public money or for our amusement. Uh, let me take a summer meal. We can spend. <laughs> now I remember why you're an honorary knight. Of course being tempted by money is beneath you. Your honest character is dazzling to behold. Like the sunlight reflecting off the surface of Cider Lake in the late fall. I hold my hands up. My thinking was mistaken. In that case, I guess today's end of trip blowout is cancelled. I shall pack my luggage and prepare to return to Mondstadt. Mm. Yeah, I think that was only one hangout so far that Paimon was with us. Uh, I can try it for the journey. It would be nice to catch up with everyone in Mondstadt anyway. Oh, you'd do that for me? Well, this wasn't what I'd originally planned, but it's a very welcome development. When I was souvenir shopping, I picked out something for you too. Guess my thoughtfulness wasn't in vain. You got me a souvenir? Oh, what did you get me? Let's keep that a secret for now. Mm. Not because I want to keep you guessing. It's just that I didn't think I'd run into you here. All my gifts are back at the inn. I want you to find out for yourself when you open it. The surprise is what gift giving is all about, is it not? Fine. Then it's settled. We'll leave together shortly. What you see is what we've got. Feel free to look around. Oh. Oh, but... Uh, wasn't I going to go with him? Look, Mondstadt's windmills. Ah, such a comforting sight. Such a low now, rise. as promised, your souvenir. Here you go. According to the merchant I bought it from, mysterious spirits called Jin often live in lamps like this. And this lamp in particular once housed a very powerful genie. I have one of those. Merchants love to exaggerate to help make a sale, but it's still quite the pretty little lamp. I know you like rare things, so perhaps you can add this to your collection. Thank of course, you. you can also use it as an ordinary pot. Personally, I think it'd make an excellent wine vessel. Thank you. I'll put it on display. I think I'll use it as a decanter. You're welcome. I'm glad you like it. But we can't. I'm drink. ready to head into the city now. You're free to join me, or you can make your own schedule. I could give everyone their souvenirs first, but. I'm not sure whether I'm in the mood for running around and visiting people right after the long journey. Maybe I'll take a breather first. But I know I'll only get bored sitting in my room alone. Ugh. Do you have any suggestions? We can chill out together so you can relax without getting bored. I can join you for a souvenir giving so you'll have some company. You'll chill out together. I'm honored to have such a caring friend. Hmm. Let's go to the plaza in front of the cathedral. We can listen to the bards playing or feed the pigeons. After so long in Sumeru, I've begun to miss that slow-paced and relaxed atmosphere. There's no rush. We can take our time and stroll on over. Hmm. Beautifully what gift box. Gift in a... Beautiful gift box. According to Kai, contains crystal lamp. It might be best to wait till you come back from vacation with Kaya. Uh, Kaya is back from vacation. To open up uh, his gift and admire it. Uh, better to just teleport.
Port Ormos is always lively, even late into the night. People there go to bed much later than I imagined. Quite a stark contrast with Mondstadt. People pray and play music in the Cathedral Plaza during the day, but come nighttime, the streets are deserted except for the knights on patrol. Which lifestyle do you prefer? Good question. Life in Sumeru is never dull. Last time I was out drinking on the street at night, some passing mercenaries invited me to dance. Although, I did learn later that that kind of thing is highly unusual even there. <laughs> they must have been in a very good mood that night. They taught me a lot of songs that they usually sing during feasts. It really was a fun night. But be that as it may, I think I'm more suited to the free and easy life in Mondstadt. Simple, honest folks like me, honest. we don't need much to be content. Uh, can you even hear what you're saying? Fair enough. Let's shelve that discussion for now. Have you ever had a chance to hear the cathedral choir before? The hymns they sing are a whole tradition in their own right. Quite different from the folk songs that the bards play. Not yet. Sounds very interesting. Well, let's see if we can catch them today. Sister Grace is right there, so we can ask her about the choir's schedule. This seems the kind of thing that we should have heard by now. Excuse me, Sister Grace. Does the church choir have any performances coming up soon? Oh, I'm so sorry. The hymn concert we previously announced has unfortunately been pushed back. Oh? What's the story there? As you probably know, Captain Kaya, we've been trying to organize an amateur choir in addition to the regular church choir. Ah, uh, yes. I heard about that. I believe the plan was ultimately to have different choirs who can take turns to perform hymn concerts. Yes, exactly. Well, it turns out there are plenty of believers who are good singers and interested in joining a choir, so in theory... It should have been a simple case of getting everyone in the same room, then practice, practice, practice. But for some reason, the rehearsals are going terribly. I don't understand it. Everyone in the choir has a basic level of musical literacy, but they sound awful together. It's like everyone's trying to do their own thing. There's no group harmony. Oh, maybe I'm just not musically gifted enough to give them the guidance they need. Captain Kaya, I know you like listening to hymns. How good is your understanding of vocal music? Me? <laughs> music is far from my forte. But if you need some help, then don't worry. I know an expert who's more than up to the task. Thank you so much, Captain Kaya. Having some expert guidance will definitely be a great help. I'm sure you've figured out who this expert is already. Mm. He has the best singing voice of any poet in Mondstadt yeah. and understands poetry better than any other singer. Yeah, six fingers. Plus, Mozart. he's exceptionally easy to find. Nine out of ten times, he's in the tavern. Six finger. Hold that. The wind rises. Good day. Drinking alone? I hope you don't mind us joining you. Mm, hang on, I don't really remember Kaya interacting with him. I remember Jean and Diluc. Yeah, but they probably would know each other from the tavern. Hello, hello! Please, take a seat. <laughs> We're all friends here. Patton, one moonlit alley and an apple cider. Ooh, excellent choices. Come on, let's have a toast and drain our glasses together. Here's to the time spent drinking with friends. Which is more unforgettable than the drinks are delectable? <laughs> Ever the poet, Professor Venti. A beautiful toast from the bard with the most. Any new songs of yours we could listen to? 
There's a real dearth of quality entertainment at the moment, since the Cathedral's choir performance has been delayed again. Speaking of which, I trust you've heard Sister Grace's choir perform before? Of course! Though the format is a little on the formal side, they do sing quite beautifully. <laughs> Very pleasant to listen to. So you'd say you enjoy listening to hymns? Hmm, let me think. Well, however it's expressed, as long as you can hear the singer's passion and joy in their voice, I consider it a phenomenal performance. Passion and joy, huh? An intriguing perspective. By this logic, I suppose Lord Barbados would also enjoy the choir's performances. Oh? And why is that? Think about it. It's only because of his patient guidance and protection that the people of Mondstadt can now sing such beautiful hymns in the cathedral. It must be quite satisfying for him to hear a joyful people lift up their voices in song. Yes, well, that's a beautiful image filled with hope. But actually, maybe Barbados himself doesn't give it so much thought. In principle, the hymns of the cathedral are dedicated to a god. But in reality, the audience are all ordinary people with very worldly concerns. So what really matters is that the people enjoy what they're listening to. Hmm. <laughs> if Sister Grace was able to see things that way, perhaps she wouldn't feel so distressed. Huh? Distressed? About what? You express Sister Grace predict me to venti? Ugh, she might be asking a bit too much. To be honest, if they have a natural talent for music, they should just be allowed to sing whatever they want. It'll all sound good. Mm, not necessarily. Uh, if they aren't singing the same tune, if their voices aren't in harmony. Uh, I'm pretty sure the first people to sing songs to the Animal Archon weren't all singing the same tune. Besides, he is the god of freedom. Surely he'd prefer to hear Mondstatters sing their hearts out however comes naturally to them. Well, to each their own, I say. But Sister Grace seems quite bothered by the whole thing. If only a kind soul with a deep understanding of poetry and music could help her. Patton! More drinks? Uh-oh. <laughs> I only brought enough money for one bottle today. I'll have to pass. Another bottle of apple cider for Venti, please, Patton. My treat. Wow! <laughs> Thanks, Kaya. Ah, you were one of the finest students ever to emerge from my fast-track love poetry class. Uh, yeah, I always I did admire that. your enthusiasm and kindness. With the aid of this bottle, a humble bard's woes are whisked away on the wind. And so it falls to this humble bard to pass the blessing on to another. <laughs> then this is probably the single most worthwhile alcohol purchase I've ever made. With your help, Sister Grace's problems are as good as solved. Sister Grace is a devout follower of the Animo Archon. Perhaps it's her depth of devotion that causes her to worry too much about the smallest things. Don't worry. Just wait a moment, I'll go find her. Right after I finish this cider. <laughs> the next time you visit her, our sweet sister shall be sad no more. You say farewell, to enjoy some fine wine. Wait, we enjoyed some fine wine, they never let us drink. Kaya is a wily character, but free wine is always the most delicious. You can't always refuse. Eh, it's fine. I mean, the church's choral hymns aren't exactly my strong suit, what with all the finicky formalities and so on. But as long as there is love for music in the air, I'm sure I'll be able to help. Mm, sounds like you actually take a lot of work. You're not just doing for the wine. Hey, if I'm happy and Sister Grace is happy and the audience is happy, <laughs> that's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. I don't care much about her. So, Kaya no. is a wily character. Eh, it's fine. Uh, work? Hey, if I'm happy. Okay, same thing. Now six.
Swan Fury. Hello, Sister Grace. How are the rehearsals going? Captain Kaya, your bard friend has a few suggestions that are somewhat fanciful in nature. Uh, fanciful in the sense of not worth adopting? Is that what you mean? What are your thoughts, Zengti? Everyone in the choir loves to sing, but they're used to singing their favorite songs. Suddenly asking them to sing in perfect harmony like a church choir with years of experience is just too difficult. So, why ask them to adjust to the demands of those staid old church hymns when you could just create a new song for them? One that they'll be able to grasp quickly? <laughs> if you want, I could help. Church choirs typically stick to traditional hymns. This is certainly an innovative idea. What's stopping you from considering it, Sister Grace? While I don't expect a recently established amateur choir to perform on par with our own church choir, this would be a major departure from tradition. I'm just not convinced that it's appropriate. <laughs> Is the Church of Favonius really such a stickler for tradition? Giving believers the chance to express themselves freely seems like it would be a very positive thing. So, Venti, do you think the Animo Archon would like to hear a new melody? Of course! This was the wish of the people when New Mondstadt was first founded. Okay, well, let's see what our other friend thinks. Traveler, what are your thoughts? I, for one, am inclined to agree with Bainty's understanding of Barbados. The audience might take some time to get used to new song. No, for sure. Another vote of confidence. Maybe there's hope for this idea yet. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just a generational thing, but... Oh, well, it's not a completely unreasonable idea. I suppose it can't hurt to try. Looks like we're all in favor then, so let's start preparing. Sister Grace, could we trouble you to inform the choir members? Of course. I'll tell them now, and then we'll give this a try. Should we find some people to help us compose the lyrics? If this is to be a new song of the people, then the more fresh ideas we have, the better. Good idea. Let's split up and find some contributors, Traveler. Who should I go look for? What should I say to them? No, who should I look for? Hmm, let me think. Since we're composing a song, we should try and recruit at least one person who understands music. Aha, I know. Sister Grace, how would you feel about us asking Sister Barbara to provide her input? Wouldn't she be part of Given the that choir? the idea is to write a song dedicated to Lord Barbados, I'm sure Sister Barbara would be very willing. Perfect. Traveler, why don't you head into the cathedral and invite Sister Barbara to join us? I'll look for another friend who's interested in helping us. Got it! Ah, with this melody, it'll be much more expressive. The wind rises! Too slow. Oh. I thought I had to go inside. Let the wind lead. Traveler, it's been a long time since I last saw you in the cathedral. Well, it's just the person I was looking for. I have a rather unusual request for you. Please, don't be shy. Go right ahead. Let's tell Barbara about the play to write a brand new song. Oh, I see. What an interesting idea. The hymns we know today have been passed down to us through the ages. Very few people would ever think to create a new one. But as long as we put our hearts into it and write with reverence and devotion, perhaps our new song can become part of the tradition that is passed on and bring joy to future generations. I never imagined that the Bard would come up with such an amazing suggestion. I'd really love to be a part of this. We're having discussion in the plaza now. Would you like to join? You have time to join a lyric writing session? Sure! Let's go there together right now! Anything the knights can do for you? Squall Fury! Ah, do you you're the... here. You took your sweet time! 
Yeah, why there so many people? I was just around the corner. So Kaya's helper is Tiona, huh? I've seen Kaya play Genius Invocation TCG, making up a bunch of baloney to distract his opponents. <laughs> He's a trickster, plain and simple. So now, I gotta check with you guys to see if what he's saying is true. Can we really write about anything we want in this song? Even the evils of Mondstadt's wine industry? And is the choir really gonna perform it publicly? <laughs> so everyone on the streets will hear it? Do you think she can really write about that? I hope to look won't mind. I can guarantee he won't. <laughs> <laughs> then I want to write this. All these hands will be punished harshly by Lord Barbados. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a very novel idea indeed. I'm used to just humming to myself while I work. So after Sister Grace criticized us for not singing in harmony, I was planning on quitting the choir. I never thought we'd be able to just sing what we wanted. <sighs> what a relief. Plus, we get to write a song with Sister Barbara. I'm so honored! Thank you, everyone. Why don't we start by picking a theme for this song? I agree. Traditionally speaking, the theme should be Praise be to the gentle and loving Lord Barbados. I expect that Professor Venti might feel that topic is overdone and lacks originality, and that it may not be to Lord Barbados's liking. That's Kaya for you. Got it in one. I'd suggest that everyone start by thinking of the little things in life that bring you joy. Ooh, well then, can I praise the perfect fish head soup my mom cooked last night? Of mother. course you can. I think I'd like to rejoice in the precious days spent together with family. Let us praise Mondstadt, the city that allows us to sing freely. See? Already we have lots of wonderful ideas! <laughs> Let's write them down, and then Kaya can... Uh, uh, huh? Kaya? Hmm. Wow. Way to go separating the NPCs from... Okay, everyone! Write your characters. ideas down once you've got something. And then we'll open it up for a group discussion. I think the song should express the joy of being together with family. <gasps> should I write about fish head soup or Liyue grilled fish? Liyue grilled fish is a promo stat. Hmm. What should I sing about? Home of the Windborn. What do you think of that? Uh, surely the song should at least mention Lord Barbados. Too slow. What are you doing here? Didn't want to participate in the discussions? You're not participating either. You want to leave? I just wanted to take you to hear a performance. But that obviously didn't happen, thanks to the problems with the choir rehearsals. The rehearsals are now back on track, so I've done my part. If I stay here any longer, I'll probably get roped into singing with them. I'd rather it didn't come to that. My songwriting abilities are limited. Uh, hmm. They shouldn't be. He's he has a way with words. Or he just have to make rhymes. Uh, here you are. Here you are helping other people out when you're supposed to be kicking back and relaxing. Or perhaps this is your way of relaxing. If doing nothing but loitering on the plaza, enjoying the scenery all day, is the only way to relax, then I suppose I didn't get to relax. But that would get boring after a while. To me, it's more fun to wander around, see what's happening, and insert myself into interesting situations. Besides, can you be so sure I didn't have something to gain from helping Sister Grace with her choir rehearsal dilemma these past few days? Oh-ho! I spy two naughty students skipping class, and they just so happen to be the very two who asked me to help Sister Grace in the first place. We're ready to review and discuss everyone's lyric contributions now. Hey, why is it that you look like you're trying to run away? I still recall the teachings of Professor Venti. 
The Animo Archon cares not about how moving the people's songs of praise are, but rather whether or not the song comes from the heart. With so many true believers gathered together earnestly writing a song for him, I'm sure the Animo Archon is watching on and feels very satisfied. That's what a song of worship is all about. So, mission accomplished. And that's the reason you've decided to leave? Slipping away before the final verse is sung, before the poet has uttered the last line, before everything has concluded. I don't know. Something about it just resonates with me. You just think writing poetry is too much trouble. You're just embarrassed to sing. Oh no. <laughs> You've seen right through me. Wow, that was a craftily crafted speech. I almost fell for it. But to share all this with a group of friends, only to find myself one friend short before the final verse is sung, before the poet has uttered the last line, before everything has concluded... I don't know. Something about it just irritates me. If you don't want to write a poem, then let me gift you one. Ah! <clears throat> Abandoned to whatever fortune the cruel waters bring, bereft of control, directionless I swing. The swift currents surge, and onward I urge, through the snow and frost that fall and winter bring. Majestic waves cresting, surf roaring its tail, none but the ocean to hear as I sing. The stars in my eyes as I chart toward the horizon, that into one day from the endless dome of night I shall spring. If you are a chaser of freedom, the Animal Archon will bless you. So why not let those feelings out and sing with everyone? A boat that has come unmoored will not get lost in the night, but sail towards the dawn. A beautiful image. Of course, you don't have to believe in it, but the winds of Mondstadt will guide every lost ship back to safe harbor. Well, after a fine poem like that, it would be plain rude of me not to rejoin you. <laughs> Let's head back together. You two of all people have to be there for the grand finale. Oh. Ah, now I got it. I'm bored and tethered. If you are chaser of freedom, why not sing with everyone? Reviewing you think I've got a sharp tongue? Uh, uh, okay, memento. Uh, all those options wouldn't change anything. I just tell it like it is. If someone can't handle it, Look, Mondstadt's windmills. It's ah, better now. Such now, according to the mer merchants, I know you like rare things, so perhaps you can add this to your collection. Thank you. Put on display. You're welcome. I'm glad you like. I'm ready to head into the city now. I could give everyone. Maybe I'll take a breather first. But I know I'll only get bored sitting in my room alone. Ugh. Do you have any suggestions? I can enjoy you for the souvenir given, so you'll have some company. Yes, I suppose. Okay, souvenir run it is. They're mostly people you know, so it'll be a chance for you to say hi to some people you haven't seen in a while. Let's start by going to the Knights of Favonius headquarters. Jean and Lisa will definitely be there, and with any luck, we might run into a few others too. <laughs> You're so happy just to see the sun again. How childish.
Hey, you too busy? I'm back most times. You must have had a tough journey, Kaya. Oh, it's been a while, cutie. Yes, welcome back, Kaya. Uh, why is the honorary knight accompanying you? you explain your chance to encounter Kaya and Samaro to Jean and Lisa. Hmm, I understand. <sighs> back to matters at hand, Kaya. I have already received your report. You did well this time, thank you. A few days ago, we received a letter from the representative of the Wine Merchants Association in Sumeru. It was thanks to your on-the-spot decisions that further losses, due to continued delays, were avoided. Just doing my duty. Anything to reduce the acting Grandmaster's workload. Oh, I nearly forgot. I have some unused travel funds. I'll return the surplus now. I have said urge to expose him. He's talking like he wasn't planning on spending it. <sighs> Given the suddenness of the situation and the difficulty in resolving it, I authorized a greater than normal disbursement in case of unforeseen circumstances. But I didn't think there would be this much left over. Thank you, Kaya. Just doing the right thing. But I'm not actually here for a post-trip debrief. I brought some souvenirs back for everyone. <gasps> souvenirs from Sumeru? Oh. Cool. Here. The letter opener is for Jean. The oh. jeweled brooch is for Lisa. And the items in the box are for everyone else. The artistry of this is exquisite. Look at the ornamentation on the sheath. This must be one of those crafts unique to Sumeru. It's my first time seeing one in person. Thank you, Kaya. I love the color of the gem in this brooch. And the setting is so elegant. You have excellent taste, Kaya. This can't have come cheap. It wasn't too bad. I didn't spend too much. They use Might I intrude a moment? Albedo, is that you? Come in. I finished the latest quarterly expenses report for the workshop. It's ready for your review. Traveler, greetings. And Kaya, welcome back from Sumeru. I haven't seen you in a while. Hello, Albedo. You two look like you're in good spirits. As a matter of fact, the honorary knight and I traveled back from Sumeru together. Ah, yes, and I brought some souvenirs for you and Klee. They form a set. Hold on, let me dig them out. You're too kind. Klee has been constantly inquiring as to the timing of your return lately. Since you weren't around, she thought you had also been grounded, <laughs> and that it would be a long time before you could come out. Children always have the most peculiar way of looking at things. <laughs> also been grounded? Sounds like things haven't been too dull for you all in my absence. Ugh, it's Klee's third time this month. Evidently, you're not the least bit surprised. No. On the contrary, what would be a surprise is if Klee ever managed to stay out of trouble for a substantial length of time. <laughs> Um, uh, anyway, since my souvenir is part of a set with Klee's, there's no rush to give it to me. When Klee's next, uh, well, released, I'll bring her to see you sometime. We'll collect our souvenirs together. Sure, makes sense. Leave the surprise for the person who'll enjoy it the most. I'll leave these documents here. I'll take my leave now, everyone. Kaya, I've approved your vacation request. Use this time to relax and unwind. Don't worry about the report and other work. I'll take care of it. You too, honorary knight. There isn't any work the Knights of Favonius require your assistance with at this time, so please take it easy. Thank you. Then we'll be going now. Enjoy your vacation. But don't forget to return the Fox and the Dandelion Sea series before it's due. Don't worry, I'm nearly done with those. I'll be able to return them in a few days. He, since he was away, he'd take the vacation outside almost time already. Kaya is just as thoughtful as always. But he needs to keep himself on everybody's good side. Though there's always something to do. With everyone lending a hand, I always feel at ease.
May the animal archon Where's protect you. Kaya coming back? He still hasn't read me the 10th and 11th stories from the fox and the dandelion seed. Huh? Quit following me. I'm surprised Klee still hasn't escaped. I taught her a few tricks just before I left. Why are you smirking? This is just normal to you? Kids will always have their moments of mischief. But to be able to grow up without a worry or care in the world is something truly precious. Hmm. <laughs> well, now that all the gifts for the Knights of Favonius are with Jean, next up is... Ooh, how about we visit the Dawn Winery under the pretext of delivering souvenirs and try to score some free wine? <laughs> it's been a long time since I last saw everyone there. Plus, it'll be the perfect time to treat you to some of their newest brews. Diluc should be there tomorrow since he has business to deal with. But then there's nothing scheduled for the day after tomorrow, so perhaps it'll be easier to get free wine then. What do you think? When should we go? Uh... Tomorrow. That works. Hmm. Then I guess we'll see D. Luke. Let's meet at the front entrance of the Dawn Winery tomorrow. They could shift some uh, teleports or some update. It's always boring to Too get all the way to the winery or the wolf. Quit following me. Uh, hang on. No, not that. Wait, there's no time. That's more. You made it. Come on, let's go inside. Brace yourself for some sour grapes. <laughs> If you're not feeling well, then let me go this time. Oh, I I'm fine. It's not serious. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. What are you doing here today? And I see you've brought a plus one. You don't usually complain about me. Greetings. Oh, it's nothing particularly pressing. It's just that we recently returned from Sumeru, and given how long it's been since we last visited the winery, we thought we'd drop by and say hello. Is that it? Make yourselves comfortable, then. Oh, do you really mean that? Because my definition of comfortable happens to involve prodigious amounts of your finest wines. Speaking of which, I'm curious where you store the wine these days. Is it the same place as it always used to be? Sounds like you're in a hurry to reach your goal. Been plotting this raid for a long time? Plotting a raid? Why, you misunderstand me. The truth is, a rumor happened to reach my ears recently. My informants tell me that last month, the Dawn Winery spent a large sum of mora on two bottles of limited edition Northland Valberry liquor. However, it turns out that they are likely just cheap knockoffs masquerading as the real thing. Of course, a teetotaler like yourself would struggle to tell the difference. So why not get a connoisseur to help you appraise the quality? Oh wait, but the sterling reputation of Dawn Winery is at stake. Why, 
If you really purchased bootleg liquor, that would be scandalous. Better to have unknown and insignificant alcohol aficionados do the taste test for you. To prevent word getting out. Quite the story. You used that one last year. Got anything else? What? Really? Um, uh, I totally forgot. Hmm. In that case, how about the principle of reciprocity? Here, this is for you. I bought it for you in Sumeru. And it cost a veritable mountain of mora. It's just... <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> Put it on the table. That's it? No comment whatsoever? You want a comment? Okay, then. This thing is... very in line with your unique aesthetic tastes. Much like that vase over there. Elzer, fetch a bottle of this year's newest batch from the warehouse, or else someone will keep blathering on with endless excuses. One moment, Master Kaya. I shall fetch it immediately. <coughs> What's wrong, Elzer? Are you okay? My throat is a bit raspy is all. It got better after I began taking medicine, but recently <coughs> it flared up again. Other than a bit of difficulty breathing now and then, it's nothing to be concerned about. <coughs> Many illnesses are caused by overwork. If you don't get enough rest, medicine alone won't solve the problem. Surely you should have long since handed over the work of the winery to D. Luke by now. You can't keep being D. Luke's butler. He's becoming a louse. Actually, most of the time he... <coughs> Take some time off, Elzer. Don't put it off any longer. I'll handle the guild matters. It's important to take care of your health. You have to take it seriously. And cavalry, Captain. You would do well to remember that brevity is the soul of wit. Master Diluc, Master Kaya, thank you both. <coughs> <sighs> then I'll take my leave and rest for a few days. Enjoy your vacation. Though, before you officially clock out, let me head out the door with you. We can grab a few bottles on the way. There's nothing quite like enjoying a quality wine while feeling the gentle breeze against your face. Ah. Want to come to look? We can drink a sight together. Normally I'd accompany you, but unfortunately I still have some pressing matters to take care of. My apologies and regards to both of you. Really? Oh, that's a shame. Where's Kaya? Gone already? Kaya's okay, still here? Why are you working Right on? now, just the usual day-to-day -day winery business. But I'll be attending a meeting in Elzer's place shortly. The meeting concerns research and development of new beverages, and involves collaboration between several different wineries. It makes more sense for me to attend, anyway. Kaya can answer any questions you might have while I'm not here. He's... Quite familiar with the winery. Hmm. The visa looks completely out of place in this building, probably a gift. Oh, watch your knife, forget not the splinter of the doll. Okay, th th this is... This is Dilux. Uh, did he place that thing on the table? No. I asked Connor to select a bottle of our best. He'll bring it by shortly. You asked Connor? <laughs> he, 
He hasn't seen you in a while. He's just happy to be able to do this for you. Considerate as ever. Ah, Elzer, I also brought you a gift. Here, this belt buckle's for you. Such artistry. Thank you very much indeed. I'll put it on as soon as I get home. Glad you like it. Go on, enjoy your time off, and don't forget to see a doctor. Very well, Master Kaya. I'll be taking my leave now. Elzer is a good guy, and he's very responsible. But with a thousand different things to worry about each day, that same sense of responsibility wears him down. Master Kaya, your wine and an apple cider for your friend. All freshly fermented this year. Please, have a taste. They're just let Traveler, this one's for you. Drink now? When that happened, thank you. Oh, very clear. And a full-bodied aroma. That's rather nice. Ah, isn't it? This one's a little on the sweeter side. But I can go grab a dry one if you'd prefer. No need. Sweet is just fine. Let's drink one together. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I haven't caught up with you like this in a long time. We used to always pour the first glass for you when cracking open a new barrel. With you gone these past few years, I've had to drink it for you. Well, since it wasn't me harvesting the grapes, de-stemming, or crushing them, it's much more fitting that you should take the first taste. De-stemming, crushing. It's an important step in the winemaking process. After harvesting the grapes, the stems have to be removed prior to fermentation, or they'll affect the quality. If you'd like, Traveler, you can help us harvest some grapes. Winemaking can be quite a lot of fun. It isn't nearly as exciting as he makes it sound. Your back will be in so much pain after picking grapes that you won't be able to stand up straight. Master Kaya is right. Harvesting grapes is a back-breaking labor. But seeing the grapes turn into grape juice, then ferment into wine, it's a fascinating experience. And every person at the winery should have a chance to share in it. Wait, so D. Luke actually helps you with the winemaking? Oh, goodness no. Master D. Luke is far too busy, not just during the day, but even at night. Oh? And just what is D. Luke always so busy with? Well, you know, uh, come nightfall, he's always out there, uh, <clears throat> networking, and so, so on. Everybody here knows? <laughs> uh, Master Kaya, you may be surprised to learn just what lengths Master D. Luke is willing to go to for the sake of the business. <laughs> Connor, you're an awful liar. I hate to see you struggle. Oh, <laughs> uh, so Master Kaya, how do you like your drink? I remember you weren't very interested in wine when you were young. No, not everybody. The housekeepers don't know. They find it suspicious. Uh, that was a le least interesting conversation, conversational history. Connor almost exposed the Dark Knight hero. That was because the adults said children weren't allowed even a drop. Don't you remember how much trouble D. Luke got in that time he snuck a drink? Ah, yes, of course. Adeline even covered for the two of you. <laughs> but on a serious note, having grown up at a winery, I spent my childhood watching Tunner plant the grape seeds, waiting for them to ripen on the vine, harvesting them together and waiting for the alcohol to ferment. Even though I couldn't help with making distilled spirits, watching everyone work was fascinating. How could anyone not love to drink with a childhood like that? So, let us raise a glass to wine itself. And in thanks to the gracious hospitality the winery has shown us today. To our generous hosts, to my... So, my drink's no alcoholic. Ah, oh, I thought it was. Okay. Here, here. To Don Winery. Pure glass clink and properly trained. Speaking of wine, shop. Connor, I have a gift for you. It's a decanter set from Sumeru. I get a present too? Thank you, Master Kaya. Time really does fly. I still remember the days when 
Everyone was giving you gifts at your birthday parties when you were young. Now I have wrinkles and Tunner's bent double, while well, Master Kaya is the cavalry captain of the Knights of Favonius. How is Tunner holding up? He's still tough, but getting on in years, so some things just aren't as easy as they were. But he's used to doing things his way and doesn't trust new employees to do it for him. A lot of the temporary workers I hired quit because they couldn't handle how picky he was. Master Kaya, if you have time, why not go talk to him about it? You're probably the only person he'll listen to besides Master D. Luke. I definitely owe him a visit. I haven't seen him in some time, and I do have fond memories of the days when he was teaching me to pick grapes. <laughs> The art of winemaking is fascinating. Would you like to try and learn? Yeah, we should be able to pick some grapes here. Busy day today, Tunner? Oh, Master Kaya, you're back. No, I'm not at all busy. I just spend my hours watching the grapes growing on the vine. They're growing wonderfully this year. A few rows are almost ripe. We've already begun harvesting them these past few days, so that'll keep me occupied. Sit, sit. After we're done picking, I'll bring a few bunches over for you to try. No need. We were just drinking with Connor, and our stomachs are so full of wine that we couldn't eat a bite. Uh, what about your friend? Doesn't he want to try? I'm uh, not hungry. Allow me to introduce the Honorary Knight of the Knights of Favonius. I, I know. Ah, the Honorary Knight in the flesh. There are so many talented people in the Knights of Favonius. You all have bright futures ahead of you. Harvesting grapes is hard work. Let me help you. Do you still remember how I used to help out when we were shorthanded? <laughs> I believe I do. In that case, I'm counting on you. I'll help you. What's this? Everyone's clamoring to do manual labor? Well, suits me. More help is always appreciated. Come with me, young lad. I'll tell you which grapes are ripe enough, and you can pick them. Hmm. Happy to have another helper. Now. Let's go pick some grapes. Yeah, but I wish I could just pick them when I'm passing through. Just that. Ooh, you have nimble hands, lad. Master Kaya wasn't nearly so careful when he was young. He oh. mangled so many his first time. What a waste. You wait there. Winery rules state that whoever picks the most grapes without damaging them gets to drink the first glass from the new batch. Come on. Happy to have another helper. Now, let's go pick some grapes. There's a few more rows of grapes up ahead. Let's finish picking them together. Careful not to damage the grapes when you pinch the stem. These grapes look excellent. You're a fast learner. I'll take them. Good job. Master Kaya left the winery and moved to Monster. Just like my own son, Guy. He left home to join the Knights of Favonius, too. 
I don't know him like Miss Adeline or Master Diluc do, but I know that no matter how old your child gets, they always need a home they can come back to. And without family by your side, you at least need the companionship of friends. I've been working here for decades and watched him grow up with my own two eyes. Sometimes I get the sense that there is something bothering him, something deep-rooted. But he guards his secrets closely. Or perhaps he just doesn't want to involve us. After all, I doubt that we could help him. I can see that you have a good relationship with Master Kaya. Please look after him. He's very dear to us. I'll take her. I think Kaya is much stronger than you might imagine. Mm. That he is, yes. I do still think of him as a child. It takes time for an old man's mind to adjust. Kai is important for you to me. Wonderful! Wonderful! Knowing that he has a friend like you, we here at the winery can be happy for him. You're looking very happy, Tunner. Was the traveler telling you some jokes? <laughs> no, no jokes. Uh, I've received a letter from my son, Guy. He's really going places. I'm so delighted. Master Kaya, honorary knight. Uh, my eyesight is fading in my old age. Could you read it out for me? Of course. Hmm. Thank you both. Hmm. Does he know who Guy is? The Grapes of Warmth. Let's see what Guy has written. Mm -mm. Okay, I didn't have difference there. This is probably the other. Yeah. Go to the next. In the come here next day when Teluk is it. Quit following me. Yeah. Huh. I'm surprised Klee still hasn't escaped. Kids will always have their moments of... Hmm. Well, ooh, how... Diluc should be there tomorrow since he has business to deal with. What do you think? When should we go? Uh, the day after tomorrow. Great, then it's settled. Let's meet the day after tomorrow at the front entrance of the Dawn Winery. <laughs> Following me. Swan Fury. Huh. Hmm. You're more punctual than I expected. Let's head yeah. inside. It's just the first shower of the day. Master Kaya? And the Traveler? Welcome, welcome. Uh, please, come in. I'll fetch you both something to drink. Long time no see, Elzer. <laughs> yes, it's been a while, hasn't it? So what brings you back to the winery this... <coughs> Sorry. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? No need to be so formal. 
I just returned from Sumeru and dropped by to see you all. Ah, what a pity. Master Diluc went out to handle business last night and hasn't returned yet. Never mind. The main thing is that you and Adeland are here. Oh, speaking of Adeland, where is she? We just ignore her. She's taking some Good time thing. off. She was busy cleaning yesterday and finally has a bit of time to herself. Perfect. I brought some gifts for you both. Here, this belt buckle is for you. My goodness, it's exquisite. Thank you, Master Kaya. I, <coughs> I'll treasure it. Would you like anything to drink? We recently finished making a new batch of dandelion wine. Well, what perfect timing. I was just wondering how this year's batch was coming along. Let me fetch a barrel and have someone deliver it to the Knights of Favonius headquarters for you. Oh, I won't be needing an entire barrel. A couple of bottles will be more than sufficient. Else Diluc might say I came here to beg. Oh, Master Diluc might grumble, but he doesn't mean it. Ha, <laughs> anyway, let me fix you both a drink. Much obliged. Then I'll have a glass of dandelion wine and a glass of cider lake for him, if you please. Cider lake? It ain't drinking lake water. The name is not that literal. It is a drink with virtually no alcoholic content, as Master Kai will be aware. I'll prepare them now. Uh, please, wait a moment. I don't know, but virtually no alcoholic content sounds like... It's so little that it's practically none, but there's still some. I don't know what I was expecting, never mind, I'm used to it already. Strictly speaking, that's not entirely true. Cider Lake does have a tiny amount of alcohol in yeah. it. Please, enjoy. Try Cider Lake, uh, the elves are mixed. It's quite sweet and very tasty. Pleased you liked it. Looks like my bartending skills haven't faded with age. How have you been recently? Is the winery's business doing well? To tell you the truth, we've had our work cut out for us recently trying to fulfill some major orders. Things have only just started to quiet down over the last couple of days. So, you've had no time off lately? <laughs> Master DeLuke was concerned about the same thing. But with him being out on business for a few days, who would take care of business and the guests if I were to take time off? Maybe some other time. At least take half a day to see a doctor and make sure you're okay. If your condition worsens, Diluc will never forgive himself. <coughs> you make a fair point. If you're worried about having someone to handle the winery, why not leave it to me? I'm familiar enough with your responsibilities to cover for you for a while. Master Kaya, I... Yeah, he's on location. Please, come back to the winery more often. We all miss you very much. All right, all right. No need for that kind of talk. Come on, I'll see you out. Well, we're just there. There's no need to load that much. While I'm resting, I shall leave Dawn Winery in your hands. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Rest easy and go see the doctor. <sighs> Such great weather today. A calm breeze and delicious wine. This is quite the treat. Though, it's a pity this batch seems a bit bland. How about I go to the wine locker and fetch one from the reserve collection? I remember it's on the second floor. Is that allowed? Of course it's fine. I promised Elzer I'd help. I said nothing about leaving the wine alone. Sorry, I'm a little late to the welcome party, but I believe I just heard the words wine locker and reserve collection. Planning on pilfering a bottle of reserve, Master Kaya? The reserve collection is reserved for a reason, you know. You should at least run it past Master Diluc first. Oh, Adeline, surely you misheard. 
We were simply taking a walk around the house. I see. Anyway, what brings you and the Traveler to the winery today? We just returned from Sumeru. It's been a while, so I thought we might drop by and say hello. And perhaps enjoy a complimentary drink while we're here. Surely you wouldn't object, Adeland. How could I object? We're simply happy that you've come back to see us. Oh, Adeland, I also brought some gifts for you all. This bottle of essential oil is for you. If you rub it on your hands when it gets cold, your skin won't crack. Oh my! I can't believe you remembered something like that. Of course I remember. You always took such good care of me when I fell sick as a child. In comparison, this is nothing. No, <laughs> You're all grown up now, and you don't get sick nearly as easily. You don't need me to look after you anymore. True. I don't get sick as much. But speaking of being looked after, when I was in Sumeru, I did find myself and my stomach missing your cooking so terribly. Oh, are you hungry? Would you like to eat something? You too, Traveler. Please tell me if there's anything you'd like to eat. Well, now that you mention it, I do actually feel a bit peckish. Steak? Oh, yes. A nice steak would really hit the spot. Fragrant cedarwood grilled, medium, stewed vegetables on the side? Yes, just like you always used to make. Thank you kindly, Adeland. My pleasure. Traveler, I'm sorry I'm not familiar with your preferences. Would you like to come with me and select a few dishes? Um, uh, you cook outside? Yeah, I suppose you guys don't have a kitchen inside. Uh, what? Yeah, did I click cook? Oh, under it. Grilling the steak over fragrant cedar wood infuses it with more flavor than pan frying it. It's a favorite of Master Kaya's. Since using an open flame to grill indoors is somewhat inconvenient, we usually set up a grill outdoors. It's perfect for grilling meat, but you can also use it to make stews. I can offer you a satisfying salad, cold cut platter, and anything stewed. What would you prefer, Traveler? Um, are those two stewed? Sticky honey roast. Okay, right away. Adeline easily gets a furrowing purpose Master Kaya vegetables. really likes stewed vegetables, but it takes the most time. So I'll start making that first and then prepare your meal once that's underway. You seem to know how Spurs is set out. Of course! I looked after him and Master Diluc when they were growing up. He wasn't always such a complicated character. He was a gentle child, polite and very sweet. <laughs> Boys, huh? The gentle ones grow up to be wild, and the rambunctious ones become quiet and reserved. At least that's my experience. If there's anything you don't understand about Master Kaya and his antics, please feel free to talk to me about it. His temperament has changed quite a lot over the years, but he still has a lot of the endearing qualities I remember. I can always tell if he's being truthful, I can always tell he's up to. Kaya is much savvier and more mature than he used to be. <laughs> Goodness knows he could be tricky to deal with. But let me share a few little tips. When he answers your question with a question, stop and think carefully about what he wants you to believe, and don't be let on by him. As for not knowing what he's up to, <laughs> that's because he loves making up a good cover story. But don't let him get to you too much. You can take it from me. <sighs> you were drinking a cider lake just now, right? Right. Do you know why it's called that? The name was coined by none other than Master Crepus when he mixed the drink for Master Kaya himself. <laughs> they were adorable when they were young. One time, the winery was hosting a banquet, and Master Crepus strictly forbade Master Diluc from drinking. Master Diluc wasn't happy about that, and he convinced Master Kaya to team up with him and sneak into the wine cellar to steal some dandelion wine. <laughs> and how did I find this out? 
because when Master Kaya attempted to distract me, I could clearly see D. Luke hiding around the corner of the corridor, gesturing to Master Kaya to direct him through the whole thing. <laughs> the Captain Kaya of today never bats an eye when he lies, but he wasn't like that at all when he was young. <laughs> oh, goodness, how did I get into this? Anyway, they were discovered by Master Crepus in the end, and he was furious. He punished Master Kaya by making him write lines, and Master D. Luke was forced to clean the wine barrels in the cellar. Oh, the wine cellar had over a dozen large wine barrels to scrub, and Master D. Luke was just a child. There was no way he could finish it all by himself. Master Crepus really meant to teach him a lesson. I'd originally planned to secretly finish off the work for him, but when I peeked inside the cellar, I found that Master Kaya was already there. He and I finished scrubbing the remaining barrels when Master Crepus saw that the bruises on Master Kaya's hands were even darker than those on Master D. Luke's hands, he instantly understood the situation. Master Crepus wasn't stern by nature, so to comfort Master Kaya, he mixed him a drink and added a few drops of alcohol just so he could have a little taste. So you see, Kaya was a gentle child and never one to boast about the things he did for other people. Sometimes he'd even deny it if asked. His friends have a special place in his heart, even if he keeps this to himself. Kaya's quite a smooth talker these days, but I can tell that his habit of quietly helping others hasn't changed. I understand what it means. Ah, good. Okay, the stew is nearly ready, but the meat and the other dishes will need a moment. Please wait at the table. I'll be over shortly. The table is tight. You're not worried that I can't handle it by myself, are you? Relax. Serving meals is all part of my job as a maid. I can manage. Ah, uh, there. Drinking fine wine? Eating Adeline's steak? Ah, now this is what I call a vacation. And I got to hear some stories about your childhood. Oh? What has Adeline been telling you? She said we were a very smart kid. She said we had a strong sense of justice. <laughs> so she told the good stories. Well, shucks. Now I'm embarrassed. Food's ready. I hope you're hungry. I made a little extra, given how long it's been since you were last here. Oh, we never imagined there would be such a magnificent feast. You've really outdone yourself. Why don't you sit and eat with us this time? Mm, yeah, let's sit together. The more the merrier. <laughs> if you keep chatting away, the food will get cold. I'll wait here. Please call me if you need anything. I'm afraid that just won't do, Adeline. I'm serious. We get together so rarely. Can't you bend the house rules just this once? After all, I don't live here anymore, so I'm just a regular guest. You aren't going to refuse your honored guest this small request, are you? <sighs> Since it's you, Master Kaya, I see no choice but to honor your request. I know that us sharing a meal is a sign of our close relationship, but this is technically against the rules for a maid. So <laughs> please forgive me for rebuffing you at first. I didn't mean to sound rude. It's Kaya's fault. Traveler. Given how petty Master Kaya can be, it must be hard for him to make friends. Does he have any friends in the Knights of Favonius? Yes, me. Yes, everyone's Kai's friend. See? I do have a way with people. And now I have him here to back me up. You enjoy a home meal with Kaya and the Lind with under Chen. Hello, everyone. Huh? Pardon me, but is this Dawn Winery? I'm Guangzhou, a guard with the Secure Transport Agency under the Leo Communications Office. Here's my card. No wonder Elzer felt so strongly about staying. He certainly wasn't kidding about how busy it is. Mr. Guangzhou, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is all mine. The Secure Transport Agency has worked with your fine establishment in the past, though we have only corresponded through letters. I always found it a great pity that I, the overseer of our cooperation, have never had the occasion to visit in person. Why don't we go inside to discuss the details? No doubt the conversation will flow better with some of our wines to taste. 
Adelant, we'll continue our discussion later. Could you fetch some apple cider for the three of us? Certainly, Master Kaya. Please wait a moment. And how might I address you, sir? As well as your... your, uh... Just Kaya is fine. I'm standing in today for Elzer, who usually manages the winery's business. And this is my good friend. Hey. A pleasure to meet you as well. I'm not just here today to pay a visit. I actually have an invitation for Master Diluc to cut the ribbon at a ceremony to celebrate our agency's business. Our collaboration with Dawn Winery last year was quite successful, and I was curious about your product shipment plans for the next quarter. If it's no trouble, please, also mention to Master Diluc that our agency has expanded this year, so if the winery has any additional needs, please consider us. Master Kaya, the apple cider you requested. Master? Wait. Pardon my foolishness, but might I inquire as to your relation to Dawn Winery? What? I'm Master Crepus's adopted son, and Master Diluc's brother. However, as a serving captain with the Knights of Favonius, I am rarely at the winery. My mistake. I, I apologize for not realizing earlier. I do hope I have not done you a discourtesy. You may have misunderstood, Mr. Guangzhou. Though I am Master Diluc's brother, I don't actually live at Dawn Winery. I'm also a guest here today. I'm merely here receiving guests due to Elzer being temporarily indisposed. But please, don't worry. I will be sure to extend your invitation to Master Diluc. Thank you for your graciousness. I knew the Dawn Winery's wines were delicious, but I am only now discovering how wonderful the apple cider is. It has a clear and inviting fragrance. In addition to the apple cider, the winery has an extensive collection of reserve wines and liquors. I see you are also a connoisseur of fine wines, so it would be a shame not to sample some. Adeland, please fetch a bottle from the reserve collection in the second floor wine locker. <sighs> As you wish, Master. Thank you again for your most gracious hospitality. Today's so, trip was very three. fruitful. Now. Allow your humble servant to take his leave. Please, it was a pleasure. Here's hoping we'll have a chance to share some more fine wines together in the future. The guest has left, Master Kaya. In the end, he couldn't protect the reserve. His place succeeded again. <laughs> it's no skin off my nose. Master Diluc may have a few choice words when he learns of the situation, but that's all. All I really wanted to say is... You will always be a part of the Dawn Winery family, Master Kaya. I have never considered you an outsider. No matter when, if you ever feel tired, you'll always be welcome here. I understand, Adeland. Oh, now this is a busy day. Who's at the door this time? Hello, everyone. I'm back. Now that was fast. How are you feeling? The doctor said there was nothing to worry about. I just need some rest. But on the way back, I met someone who was looking for Master Kaya. Huh. Kaya! Shh! Clee's here to rescue you! Come on! Let's escape! Kaya's not in danger. Where are you rescuing Kaya from? <gasps> Mr. Honorary Knight! Are you grounded with Kaya too? Grounded? <laughs> yes. Albedo was saying something about that. Mm. Sumeru was fun, but it can't compare with Mondstadt. So here we are. Mm, you two must have done something to make Jean mad, but that's okay. Kaya has rescued Klee loads of times before, so when Albedo told me you came back, I went and said sorry to Jean. Kaya, you're free now! We can go play together again! Oh, if my memory serves me correctly, this child is... This is a fully qualified Knight of Favonius. Impossibly Klee. older than everybody here. Hello, miss! I'm Klee! We're sorry. Please don't ground Kaya. 
Mm. What? I really need to take Kaya and Mr. Honorary Knight away so we can go find Albedo, Sucrose, Amber, and everyone else and play together. I see. Hello, Miss Klee. You needn't worry. Master Kaya's grounding is long over. See, Adeline, you don't need to worry about me. I have lots of people to care for me now. Our son, uh, follow the sun in flight. Flee with all your might. Okay, now. Back there. Hmm. Oh, it's back there still. Hmm. Spend the money. Maybe. No, I think this may be afterwards. Behold! The price! Oh. For my sins. He was so. No, no, no. Just that. Uh, a bitter pill to swallow. Like that. <sighs> Quit following. You're always so busy. It's high time you gave yourself a pr and anyway, life is short, so we should make the most of the time we have. Right now is the perfect time to relax and enjoy ourselves. And who knows how many other chances we'll get. So come on, what do you say? Mm, let me take you some more new. Great, music to my ears. I'll cover the travel costs, of course. There's nothing more enjoyable than the company of a good friend. Let's call this a nice little excursion to round off my long business trip. Now... Let me think where we should go. Hmm. I've seen a lot of Sumeru already, so let's go for someplace new. How about Liyue? I'd be heading past there on my way back to Mondstadt anyway, so it's not out of the way. I know Liyue is out. No problem showing around. <laughs> well, lucky me. I'll hold you to that. Liyue's Ministry of Civil Affairs frequently corresponds with the Knights of Favonius. So the address on their letterhead is one of the few places I'm familiar with. I don't have much luggage, so it won't take me long to pack. Give me a moment, and then we'll head there together. Don't hmm. shoot here. You dare to defy your orders and abandon the front? I return to your majesty's palace to deliver a letter from the front, penned by the prince himself. Your humble servant, Gundafar, respectfully begs an audience. I've heard that there's lots to see and do in Liyue, but I'm sure you're more familiar with the place than I am, so I'll leave the itinerary to you. I have friends all over Liyue and can scar scouts galore. I know the best six spots, can go wrong way you're with me. Scouts. Excellent. Well, hopefully I'll get to know some of these friends for myself. It's such a satisfying feeling to just drop everything, go on a long trip, and see something new. Who knows who we might cross paths with? We might even end up going on an impromptu adventure. Just like how I met you in Port Omos, and now we're here. Come on, 
Let's see what's up ahead. Swan Fury! Do you know this shop? It looks pretty nice from the outside. Shall we take a look? Welcome to Mingxing Jewelry. We are a long-established trader of precious stones. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Hmm, let me see. Ah, huh, some nice jewelry you've got here. Maybe I can grab something with a local flavor as a souvenir. What do you think, Traveler? See anything that suits my style? Actually, I trust your judgment. Actually, let's check if there's anything off, sh off the shelf. Already buying souvenirs on the first day of your trip. Uh, goes from being singularly don't come cheap, I'm sure. Let's check if they have anything off the shelf. Ah, oh, you're interested in souvenirs. If you're struggling to decide, you might want to consider getting some jade. You can't go wrong with a nice jade pendant. They're an elegant addition to your look, whatever your age or gender. If you're looking for a specific design, we can make it to your specifications. It does take some time to fulfill an order, however. High quality jade is hard to come by, so our waiting list is at least a couple of weeks. Oh, that's a pity. I'm just visiting and I won't be in town for very long. So as much as it pains me to do so, I'm afraid I'll have to leave this beautiful bijou behind. No worries at all, sir. If you're looking for something off the shelf, why not go and see Mr. Shirto at the Jade Mystery? He also deals in jade and precious stones. Uh, the guy with the uncut stones. Uh, you're the jade betting guy. Exactly. But on that note, let me give you a word of advice. There's no risk in purchasing a piece of jade that's already been cut. But you could lose all of your mora betting on uncut rocks. <laughs> I won't say any more, as I don't want my fellow vendors to think I'm bad-mouthing them. But I think you catch my drift. It's only human nature to spend a little when you're on a trip. But don't be too hasty to part with your cash. The Ministry of Civil Affairs takes everyone's economic well-being very seriously, and they often send out the Millilith to spread public awareness of well-known scams. As guests here, I'd encourage you to watch out for anyone trying to rip you off. I think that's sound advice wherever you go into that. We appreciate it, boss. No. Okay, just want to see if you can say anything. The wind rises. Huh. Welcome. Looking for uncut stones or pre cut jade? We've got plenty of both for your viewing pleasure. Uncut stones. Ah, oh, yes, we were just briefed on that. Hmm. Let's take a look at the pre-cut jade. We should be careful. We mustn't rush into purchase. I believe I detect a quiet but distinct tone of apprehension in your words. Please rest assured. There's nothing to be quite so wary about with my business. Feel free to peruse at your leisure. I think you'll find that everything I do here is entirely above board and legitimate, and I sell only pure and unadulterated goods. No scam guaranteed. Sure, you can bet on Jade and lose if you're unlucky, but that doesn't make it a scam. My terms are clear and transparent, and I only do business with willing customers. What scammer can claim that? Sounds perfectly reasonable. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much the vendor is charging. If the customer decides to hand over their money, they're taking the bait of their own free will. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you understand. Although your peculiar phrasing at the end there, you almost make it sound as if I really am scamming people. <clears throat> anyway, betting on Jade is what it is. Feel free to try your luck, but if you can't afford to lose, then it's not for you. We don't need to cause each other any trouble. I'll leave you to browse at your own pace now while I deal with other potential customers. Hmm, amber-colored jade would probably make for a good souvenir. I really think I'm buying it. Why not? This is a quirky little place. Somehow, 
I'm inclined to entertain him for a bit. These core lapis pieces are a more a dozen. I have better quality pieces than this. Well, if you're not interested, then I guess we'll pass. Ahoy there, Captain! Uh, fancy seeing you back in town. <laughs> uh, struck any gold lately? What, a poor sailor like me? You must be joking. I barely managed to make ends meet. What about you, Chateau? Still scamming people with your pile of rocks? Hey! Keep your voice down. Can't you see I've got customers? But more to the point, when have you ever seen a customer get scammed in my store? I mean, you want the full list? Or... Hold up. Is that... Captain Kaya! What, uh, brings you to Liyue? <laughs> oh, just taking a short trip with my friend. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a good while, hasn't it? <laughs> Okay, context. Anywhere you'd recommend I visit while I'm here? Let me think. Wanmin Restaurant's always a pretty good bet. Chef Mao's daughter is a skilled chef, and their prices are very reasonable. My wife can't get enough of their boiled fish. You could give that a try. And, uh, speaking of my wife, she won't let me forget what a great help you've been to us before. So thank you, on her behalf. Your wife? Ah, uh, yes. How is she doing these days? Keeping well? Very well, thank you. Very well. Anyway, uh, I've got something I need to do down at the South Wharf, so my apologies, Captain Kaya, but I'd better get going. All right. See you. Ah, I finally remembered who that was. Captain Wu. He runs a transport business between Mondstadt and Liyue. I see. So you went through that whole conversation with no idea who you were talking to. Well, that explains the generic pleasantries and the general awkwardness. Old Wu's usually quite the chatterbox, so it's very unusual for him to just take off mid-conversation. How exactly do you two know each other anyway? Aren't you questioning him too much? I should be the one questioning him. Maybe he wants Kaya money, maybe he wants Kaya favor. An educated guess. Yes. You could put it like that. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. The captain was making a delivery to Mondstadt when his ship sprang a leak. He overexerted himself fixing it and keeping the cargo dry, and ended up passing out from exhaustion. I took him to Mondstadt to recover. Hmm, well, it still seems strange to me. Sure, he's hardly the most charming conversationalist, and he's also mighty stubborn, but all of us know Old Wu is an honest and kind-hearted man. His eldest was once playing on that big rock over there, when he took a tumble and injured himself. I helped to patch the kid up, and the next day, Old Wu was here to buy a couple of uncut stones. I'm just surprised he was so quick to excuse himself, that's all. Normally, he's the kind of guy who, if you run into him on the street and he owes you a favor, he'll grab you by the hand and thank you profusely until you ask him to stop. Well, stubborn, I can believe. Someone had drilled a gaping hole in his ship, and the water was coming in fast. How he managed to make it all the way to Mondstadt, not to mention with his cargo intact, I have no idea. Someone drilled a hole in his ship? Oh dear. They must have been one of the less savory captains out there trying to sabotage his business so they can squeeze their way into the market. When competition is stiff, sometimes things get ugly. It's the way of the world, unfortunately. His line of work isn't easy. The poor fellow usually has to set sail before the break of dawn. He's been loitering around a lot these past few weeks, though. I thought maybe he'd come into some Mora. Competition is fierce these days, and there's not a lot of Mora to be made in shipping. So every day he stays idle is another negative in the books. I do wonder what's gotten into him. Anyway, I digress. We merchants protect our goods like our own lives, so who knows? Maybe he had some important cargo to see to. <laughs> Either way, good sir, don't mind him. He's a good night, he's a kind soul. Not so kind so he's a good night. <laughs> I am an upstanding member of the Knights of Favonius, after all. Just look me in the eyes. I... Don't you find me trustworthy? 
since you asked about recommendations earlier, you're here from Mondstadt, yes? Might I suggest the tea house is somewhere to rest your legs? If memory serves, they're just about to retell the tale of Bravebeard the Valiant from the top. Why not pay them a visit? Huh. Sounds interesting enough. Let's check it out. Okay, it's anything. No. Uh, how exactly does he transport things? He's a captain to most that. They can really dock here. And it doesn't seem practical here. And this is closed off. So, I thought all transport was made through here by foot. Ah, that guy. Huh. So this is the Huyu Tea House. Let's find some seats. Ah, we meet again, Captain Kaya. What a coincidence. Twice in one day. <laughs> do you still have something to do at the South Wharf? Are you already chilling at the Huyu Tea House? Oh, that didn't take me long. And I ran the whole way. Uh, woo. Weren't you just at Wanwen Bookhouse buying a book for your daughter? What's this talk about the wharf? Shh, just leave it be, Anjong. <laughs> There's no need to embarrass him right in front of everyone else. I take it that you two aren't from around these parts. I'm a caravan guard by trade, and meeting people from all over the world is one of the main perks of the job for me. Why don't you join my table so we can get to know each other? Uh oh, seems oh, like the tea house is the place to be in Liyue. Feels like I'm back in the angel share. Did you manage to get something for your daughter just now, Captain Wu? Yes, thank you. If it weren't for you, Captain Kaya, she might not have even made it into this world. I'm so lost, Wu. What's the story here? <sighs> your wife's originally from Mondstadt, isn't she? Did you run into Captain Kai when you were there on business, or when you were visiting the in-laws? <sighs> the latter. So wait, you two have met more than once? The way Kai saved you more than once? Oh, this is so humiliating. Anyway, back when my wife was pregnant, we were taking a trip to Mondstadt to visit her parents this one time, when we were mugged by a group of treasure hoarders near Dawn Winery. That's oh, cool. that sounds awful. Were either of you hurt? I mean, he's still here, and he's still got all his limbs, so they can't have roughed him up too bad. I'm guessing Captain Kaya stepped in before they could do either of you any serious harm, huh? Yes, he did. Thankfully, he heard my wife crying for help and drove them away. My wife was injured and quite shaken up by the ordeal, so he took her to the winery and asked them to look after her. Uh, so what happened to you? Where did you disappear to? I... I was in the water. Huh? What did you jump in the water for? You know they can still get you in there, right? No, that's not... I... I did... They threw me into the water and uh, stripped me of all my clothes. They did what? <laughs> did they have a weird fetish or something? Stripping a sailor naked and throwing him into the water. <laughs> It's not like you were going to drown. So, then what? I take it you swam to shore? The treasure hoarders always move in groups, and fighting back when you're outnumbered isn't usually an option. It's no surprise that they quickly overpowered Captain Wu. I'm just glad that everyone made it out all right at the end. Captain Kaya, please, there's no need for you to try to save face for me like this. I already owe you so much. You don't have to do anything more. Yet, despite that, I somehow only ended up humiliating myself further. Oh, there's no point in me trying to save face now. They tossed me into the water to humiliate me, and to use it as leverage to get my wife to pay up. But they didn't know that I could swim. What I'd intended was to pretend to drown, then sneak back onto shore while they weren't looking, and find a way to rescue my wife. 
That was before Captain Kaya appeared out of nowhere and saved the day. So then I figured I'd get out of the water, get dressed, and catch up with you. But God knows what they did with my clothes. I couldn't find them anywhere. By the time I gave up looking for them, you were most of the way to the winery. So I had to run after you with nary a thing on myself. <laughs> Outrageous! <laughs> so, uh, what happened next? I made it to the winery, but the maids noticed me first, and they called the lord of the manor out to give me the beating the treasure hoarders never got around to. After my wife recovered consciousness, she had to have a long talk with the young lord to explain everything. He then escorted us both safely to Stonegate. <laughs> oh, whoa. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> Ugh, good luck living that one down. Trust me, I know. My wife never lets me forget. Ugh. I'm sorry, Captain. I wasn't intending to share that story. It's fine. It's my own fault for thinking I could sweep it under the carpet and forget about it. I don't know if I can ever repay you for all you've done. That's why I get so embarrassed every time I run into you. Still, it won't stop me from trying. You and your friend are here to catch the storyteller, right? The tea's on me. It's the least I can do. In fact, they do serve some food here, too, but it's not the best. Okay, let me run and get some fruit to share. I'll be right back. Hmm. Check for everyone. I wonder how much Van Arya caught of that. Old Wu really has no filter, does he? Oh, poor Wu. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. It's just... <laughs> he really didn't have to share all the details of that story. But since he didn't seem to mind, I wasn't about to stop him. Dude, forgot about what had happened. Did I bring it up the whole story on purpose? I did actually forget it first, but once he brought up his daughter, the memory of his naked escapades came flooding back. <laughs> D. Luke thought some pervert was harassing the maids. He charged straight out the door, great sword in hand, and raring to go. I haven't seen him so angry in a long time. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> So many people owe me favors nowadays. It's hard to keep track of them all. I really should go check my favors ledger once I'm back and refresh my memory. Uh, you have favors ledger? That's alarming. Hey, you didn't think I was being serious, did you? Do I really strike you as the kind of person to keep track of favors in a notebook? Yeah. I just helped the guy out on a couple of occasions because I happened to be in the right place at the right time. I have no intention of asking him to do anything for me in return. At least, not so far. I'm back with fruit. Please help yourselves, everyone. My treat. Thank you. Oh, don't mention it. It's just a few fruits, nothing extravagant. Once my new pharmaceutical business takes off and I have Mora to spare, mm. I'll get you a proper thank you gift and send it to the Knights of Favonius. Pharmaceutical business? So you found a new career? No more shipping? Uh, shipping's impossible work nowadays. There's too much competition and the margins are too small. So I've decided to switch gears. I'm going to become a partner of Boo Boo Pharmacy and provide funding for a brand new medication they're producing. It's specially formulated to treat seasonal joint and limb pain. If you didn't know, it's a very common health complaint among sailors, but also extremely difficult to treat. I've suffered from it myself, which is why I know that a lot of people stand to benefit from this once it enters the market. It's a good cause, and a stable source of income. Whichever way you look at it, it's a step up from the back-breaking work I did before. I've already had some talks, and invested one million Mora for the first round of funding. That's impressive, Wu. I wouldn't have thought you had the connections for something like that. So is it Dr. Baiju that you're in talks with? Oh no, not Dr. Baiju. 
Actually, it was his master, Dr. Baifudze. His medical expertise and clinical experience are second to none, and he really cares about his patients. He gave me a few of his traditionally formulated bone-strengthening pills when he saw me suffering from my leg pains one day. It was like a miracle cure. The pain immediately went away. Dr. Baiju's master. Yeah, I told him I'd be enthusiastically recommending his medicine to the other guys at the docks. And after some hesitation, he just went right ahead and wrote up a prescription for me, completely for free. He said that he shouldn't really be handing out free prescriptions since, and I quote, it goes against generations of tradition handed down by our forebears. But he just felt like it was the right thing to do. <laughs> what a great guy. Ah, uh, but I got chatting with Dr. Baiju recently when the Secure Transport Agency did a delivery for Boo Boo Pharmacy. He told me that his master has already passed away. Huh? Why would he say something like that? I mean, the guy's old, but he's still in great health. Captain Wu, where did you meet this old master? Uh, just out on the street? I know that sounds dubious, but this is an educated and respectable gentleman we're talking about. There's no faking that. <sighs> Hold on a second. I just remembered something. My nephew-in-law met a medicine seller not too long ago, too. He also described it as a miracle cure. He spent a lot of mora on it, but when he brought it to Boo Boo Pharmacy, Herbalist Gui took one look and told him he'd bought nothing but regular painkillers. This Bai Fuzu you met. Did he by any chance have a goatee and salt and pepper hair? He did. If I may, Captain Wu, there's a lot of mora involved here. It seems like it would be worth asking this Dr. Baiju about his master, just to set the record straight. You could show him the medicine as well. Clearly there's some misunderstanding here. You're right, Captain Kaya. A quick trip to Boo Boo Pharmacy and I can get Dr. Baiju to clear all of this up. I'm sure it's all... I mean, hopefully it's all fine. He left in a hurry. He must be stressed out of his mind right now. Should we go with him for more support? I know Dr. Baiju, maybe I should go with help. Hey, let him deal with this, okay? No point in you stressing yourself out too. Fraud or not, it's up to Captain Wu to figure out exactly who he's gotten himself involved with. I'm no Dark Knight hero, or a martial arts hero for that matter, and neither are you. Wait, we are. or are you? Now that I think about it, I can see you having a secret double life as a martial arts hero here in Liyue. You certainly have the personality for it. Either way, Liyue has its own rules and regulations. Best to let the Ministry of Civil Affairs deal with this in the proper manner. If a couple of outlanders like us get involved, we might just end up muddying the waters, even with the best of intentions. We came here to enjoy ourselves, remember? We don't want to get our priorities mixed up. Oh, and look at that. The storyteller's taking the stage. It is said that the sky's the limit for the aspirational soul. But alas, for the woes of the world are equally limitless. No such stranger to woes was Huang Guang, a man who, having suffered countless injustices at the hands of his fellow men, forsook them to dwell among the mountains and rivers. Yet fate fortuitous found him when he entered the tutelage of an adeptus and learned many mystical arts from them. Per his master's wishes, he then returned once more to the human world, only this time with a sworn duty to cleanse the land of demons and to see justice done wherever he might tread. Is that all? Huh. Oh, I was hoping to hear the rest of the story. Do you like the storyteller? What do you think of the story? It was alright. I suppose the hero always has to sacrifice himself to save others, and it does make for some good storytelling. But it leaves you wondering how he really feels about the whole thing. Did he ever have second thoughts? Only he can know, I suppose. Oh. I see the show is over. Uh, do you find Baiju? Were you defrauded? Yeah, I saw Dr. Baiju. Looks like it was a scam after all. 
Then what are you waiting for? Don't just stand there. You need to report this to the Ministry of Civil Affairs right away. Hold on. Let's not lose our cool. Get your story straight first, so you can give them a clear and detailed account of events in the order that they occurred. And one more thing. Do you still have a way to contact this guy? Well, I'd arranged to meet him at the Yunshang Tea House once I've withdrawn the next sum of Mora, so I suppose he'll still be waiting on that. Okay, so you've got another meeting lined up. Hmm. Uh, I've got no one to blame but myself for this. I can't believe I was so gullible. I guess the world isn't made for naive simpletons like me. Don't say that, it's not your fault. Uh, your good nature is not to be ashamed of. The way he abused your trust is despicable. Young man, you're a good person. And I'm touched by your words of comfort. Still, it's up to me to find a way to get my Mora back. The consequences are mine alone to bear. <laughs> At my age, I'm sure I should be comforting the young with words of wisdom rather than the other way around. What does that say about how I've spent my life? Hmm... What is it, Kai? Got a solution? It's obvious, isn't it? He needs to report the case to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. But I want to help. There must be more we can do. <sighs> Come with me. Mm, that con artist is human scum. Don't worry, Wu. We'll come with you to the Ministry to report the case. Surely I'll be able to get my Mora back. Probably. Hopefully. I am quite curious. How does our chivalrous martial arts hero intend to come to Captain Wu's rescue here? There are countless victims of injustice in the world. We can't try to help each and every one of them, can we? But you're a good person, Kaya. Right now, we can at least help one person. Oh, ho, ho. I'm surprised. I didn't know you thought of me as someone who helps other people unconditionally. I'm genuinely flattered. But we both know that I'm not that kind of person, really. We even helped him think through where we can find the con artist. You didn't want others to laugh at Captain Wu's woes. You helped Captain Wu just because you were there and you didn't even remember it. Yeah, all of them. And that's why I believe you'll be willing to help. Your logic is very straightforward and quite endearing in its simplicity. But I like how you think. So I'll indulge your martial arts hero aspirations for now. Uh. Captain Wu, how would you feel about owing me one more favor? I'm sorry, Captain Kaya? Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I found a way to recover your Mora that would leave the man who defrauded you feeling angry and frustrated, but give him no way to get back at you. If it could be done, and the only cost was owing me yet another favor, what would you say? What exactly are you getting at? The Traveler here is adamant that you should ask me for another favor. Personally, no. I blame the Storyteller. After hearing the inspiring tale of Bravebeard, he's all gung-ho about playing hero and righting this injustice once and for all. Captain Kaya, young man, I... thank you. I will humbly accept your kindness. All right. Now here's what I'm thinking. You developed play with Kaya? All right. Then it's settled. Per our brave hero's plan, Let's rendezvous at Yenshang Tea House tomorrow. Don't worry. You can count on us. Absolutely. We're all neighbors here. Old Wu's problems are our problems too. Page 8.
There's no such thing as pure freedom in this world. Oh. Even the wind cannot so blow on forever. Huh. Ah, you're here. Good. I'll head upstairs first, and you join me in a bit. You've got nothing to worry about. As long as this lucky coin's in my hands, it'll do as it's told. Before I toss the coin, I'll get our guy to bet heads or tails. Then it's your turn to bet. Now remember, if I touch my chin, you bet heads. If I touch my forehead, you go for tails. Is that really random? Each time I play that, this could be one or the other. Okay. Head and tails. I think this would be better head, but alright. Uh, uh, Kyle leaves, everyone's in position. The plane is risky, but if anyone can pull it off, it's Kaya. Hello, are you waiting for someone? I'm sorry, I must have spaced out for a second there. I'll head up now. As long as you follow the rules of the tea house, you're welcome here. Please be our guest. Hmm. Use a scam. As long as you follow the rules of the tea the house, rooms? you're welcome here. Don't worry, just call a comment, so it should be fine. I know all I have to do is wait here, but no, forget it. I can't get cold feet now. I'll trust you and Captain Kaya. This table's taken. This table's taken. Oh. Hmm. From the way you describe it, Liyue does sound like an attractive place to settle. Perhaps I might have to make the move here after all. All that awaits me back in Mondstadt is a horde of insufferable sycophants. Truly tedious. Mm. The reason I left home in the first place was because I was reluctant to simply live off of my inheritance. I understand. For one as ambitious as yourself, Mr. Rich, living off of the family fortune must feel like the dullest existence in the world. Um, what are you doing? It's common courtesy to introduce yourself. Can't you see we got here first? Don't be so tired, just looking for a seat. The other tables are all taken. This was the only place left. They're running out of tables, huh? <laughs> Looks like this location's getting too small for them. Very well, I'll make an exception for you this one time. Let's hope the tea, at least, won't disappoint me. So, my friend, what's your name? Kai is a young lord from a wealthy family. Kai and I discuss titles in advance. I am a aspiring foreign disciple of the Guho clan. I am a aspiring foreign disciple of the Guho clan. Here is the tea that you ordered. Please enjoy. Ugh, this tea is... Uh, never mind. Mr. Bai, this has been a most pleasant and insightful conversation. I consider it good fortune that I encountered such a refined gentleman as yourself so far from home. Please allow me to pay for the tea. <laughs> yes, good fortune indeed. In that case, I must thank you for your generosity. You there. I'll get yours too. Thanks. Far from home? Where are you originally from? Oh, you can't tell? My family's lived in Mondstadt for generations. I got bored sitting around at home and decided to set off on a journey to expand my horizons. The sights of Liyue Harbor are rather spectacular. I've half a mind to buy a waterfront property here so I can come vacationing every year. That would be quite nice. If the family would spare me a little loose change, I could even invest in an antique shop or two so I have something to do during the day. But waterfront properties are so expensive. Flaunting your wealth much? Show off. Yeah. Flaunting? Come on, we're talking 
20, 30 million tops, surely. Isn't that just pocket change? Mr. Rich, just to clarify, that's quite a large sum of Mora, as far as the common man is concerned. It's understandable that our friend over here feels out of his league. The name's Albert. Surname Rich. But only the servants in the house address me as Mr. Rich. Now that we're so well acquainted, Mr. Bai, please just call me Albert. <laughs> Albert does have a nice ring to it. It is my honor to become friends with someone of your... caliber. You flatter me. What say you to acting as my guide during my time in Liyue? I'll pay you handsomely, of course. Naturally, board and lodging would be included. And I could pay you in the region of... 50,000 mora per day? No need, my good friend. I shan't be so vulgar as to take your mora. We're both men of character. The pleasure of your ongoing acquaintance shall be ample reward in itself. To join a noble gentleman on his travels is a rare opportunity. Please, let me draft up an exact itinerary. I'll make sure to give you the experience of a lifetime. You there. You're welcome to join us if you want. Which clan did you say you were with? The... Huha clan or something? It's the Guha clan. Guha, huh? I have a sword for the Guha <laughs> Strange clan. choice of name. Gotta say, I've been in Liyue for a while now. This is the first I'm hearing of them. I guess they're one of these obscure ones who keep to themselves. Yes, well, there are many martial arts clans and factions in Liyue. It's only natural that you haven't become acquainted with all of them. Ha, <laughs> fair enough. Still, weird name. Bet they have some even weirder practices. Seriously, though, what kind of skills do you guys train anyway? It's all for show, right? I saw some people performing a few tricks down at the wharf. Is it that kind of thing? There's people performing tricks or martial arts at the wharf. The Guha clan is devoted to the teaching of martial arts. If you're comparing the Goha clan to street performers, we have nothing to talk about. I'll take my leave now. I'll get my own check as well. I already told the server to put it on my tab. Don't bother getting her to split the bill. It'll only complicate things. Our masters, our master teaches us not to accept free favors. I was merely passing by. Your generosity would be better served elsewhere. Our master. Young man, there's no need to take things so seriously. Why don't you loosen up and enjoy the free drink? Are you trying to make a point by throwing my generosity back in my face? All right, then. What if I say your bill is mine and don't let you pay? Want to fight? Yeah, please, my friends, let's not get so worked up. Yin Chong Tea House is no venue for a duel. We'll all get escorted right out the door. You young people have hot tempers, I understand that. But there's no need to come to blows over a few words taken to heart when there are far more diplomatic ways to resolve the dispute. Okay, then how about we settle this with a coin toss? I'll fill my own bill if I win. Did I hear that right? So you'll only pay for yourself if you win, but I'll get the check for the three of us if you lose. It's not that I care about the Mora. After all, I offered to pay for everyone's drinks in the first place. No, what I find truly absurd is your refusal to play fair. I demand that you also pay for three if you win. What a lot of hogwash. Uh, you insulted me first, and now you also want to dictate terms. If I win the bet, you had to make a formal apology to the Guha clan. <laughs> Fine. You can have your apology if you win, but on one condition. We'll do the best of three, and the winner pays for the table. Well, as long as you're no longer raring to fight, peace begets wealth, as the elders used to say. <laughs> Why don't you join us, Mr. Bai? Let's entertain this guy for a sec. We don't want him to think you're stingy. Uh, but I wasn't even a part of your argument. What are you trying to say, Mr. Bai? 
Whose side are you on here? I, uh, of course, I'm on, uh... And anyway, it's no big deal if you win. It's just a few cups of tea, after all, so you can just take it from your fees as my guide. Uh, all right then. I suppose it's not all that different from the dice gambling games I used to play in my youth. If it's just for a few drinks, you can count me in. All right, now we're talking. Okay, now that we've agreed on the rules, how should we do this coin toss? After all, a Mora coin looks the same on both sides. Oh yeah. I never... Easy, we can just borrow a pen from the counter and mark on one side. So, if the Mora coin looks the same on the both sides, how do you... Do we have the head and tails rule from before? Tossing coin wouldn't be something common here. Well, that should be simple enough. Here, I'll take this coin and ask the counter to draw a line on one side. You two can wait for me. Young man, I can see that you haven't spent many years in the real world. You take everything far too personally. I, too, only met this Mondstadt millionaire by complete chance today. But we're getting along just fine. I actually came here to meet with a business partner to count the cash from two recent investments when this gentleman struck up a conversation with me. In the real world, you've got to keep up appearances. There's no need to offend the rich. After all, if you keep them happy, you can probably make some more off of them, too. You young people are much too impulsive. It pays to keep a level head. Just so we're clear, let's say the marked side is heads and the unmarked side is tails. Everyone has to pick a side before the coin toss. Oh, and no takebacks. Well, weren't you going to tell me which one landed before? We should also take turns tossing the coin. Sounds fair to me. Why don't you do the first toss, Albert? All right, then. I'll start us off. Here we... Oh! <laughs> Wait. I nearly forgot to collect everyone's bets. Mr. Bai, heads or tails? Hmm. I suppose the choice is arbitrary since it's a 50-50 chance. I'll go with tails. Let me think. I'll also go with tails. What about you? Heads or tails? Okay, heads. Hmm. Tails, just that plant. Oh, darn, I won. Lucky me, I guess. I won as well. Guess there might be a formal apology in the cards after all. Hmm. Hey, this is just first toss. Let's keep mm. going. I have a suggestion. If one of us loses twice in a row, they should get knocked out while the other two carry on playing to decide the winner. Otherwise, with three of us playing, it'll start to get difficult to keep track of who's won the most times. I flipped the coin last time, so why don't you go next? I don't want you blaming my coin tossing skills if you guess wrong this turn. Here. Now just wait a second, my dear friends. Please let me do the second toss. Oh? Anxious to take your turn, Mr. Bai? You are both young and I've already seen your short tempers for myself. If Albert loses this round and this young man wins, you'll be tied. And before you know it, you'll be at each other's throats again. This is part of the plan. What should we do? This... He was the one at fault. The plan was for Kai to pass the queen next to me next. I didn't really... Oh. Will 
Well, that's not my only consideration, either. You two may be too young to know this, but I've been around the block a few times. What's to say this isn't a trick coin, hmm? In dice games, people use all sorts of methods to rig the game. Some even fit the dice with mechanisms that give them whichever result they want. If Albert wins the next round and you, young man, lose for the second time in a row, then the third round will just be a tiebreaker between him and me, and you won't get your apology to the Guhua clan. If that happens, only for you to then find out that the coin was rigged all along, you're sure to accuse me of working with Albert to scam you while mocking the Guhua clan. I can only imagine the kind of vengeful warpath that would put you on. A purely hypothetical scenario, of course, but one that I'm bringing up now to avoid any misunderstanding further down the road. Go on, give me the coin. I'll show you how to check if it's been rigged. Why is Kaiser smiling? The catches will be in deep trouble. Very diligent of you indeed, Mr. Bai. Looks like I chose the right person to be my guide. Here, take it. A rigged coin will always be a little heavier than a normal coin, you see. Yeah, this one seems perfectly normal to me, however. But don't take it from me. Why don't you test it for yourself? No need. Penis below me, I trust your judgment. That was a close call. What's your bet this time, Mr. Bai? I'll stick with tails. Tails, huh? <laughs> Well, you seem to have a feel for this, so I guess I'll match your bet again this round. Tails it is. And you? Heads. You're going to turn up heads. Was that just a mm, guess? Or? Well, my luck's still just about holding out. <laughs> the three of us are now tied, so no one drops out. Certainly better than Albert and I going head to head in the final round. My turn. Mm hmm. Well, here you go. What'll it be, Mr. Bai? Hmm. It's a tough decision this time. <laughs> That's what makes it fun, isn't it? Anyway, there's no need to stress. What's the cost of a few cups of tea compared to 50,000 I'll be paying you every day? Uh, you make a good point. All right, I'll take heads. Okay, and now it's my turn to guess. Not that the outcome matters either way to me. I won't even notice the more is gone. Whatever, I'll take tails. Okay, tails. Firstly, the condoms hands. Now it's. His turn. Oh, why did it have to be heads? This whole thing started because you two got into a spat, and now I'm the one that has to foot the bill. Hmm. What say you to another round? Sure, why not? I'm having fun. I can go for as many rounds as you want. Emote. You guys have fun. <laughs> what a miserly person. Do as you please. The two of us can play. But Albert, all the fun of gambling is in the stakes involved. What say you to throwing a little loose change into the pot? Ah, oh, come on now. No need to walk on eggshells here. Let's keep it simple, shall we? If you guess right, I pick up the tab. But if you guess wrong, I'm afraid it's still on you. Uh, sure. That's exactly what I was thinking. Well, here's the coin. You can toss first. I'll take heads. Hmm. I'll choose... Wouldn't it defeat the whole purpose of betting if you guessed the same as me? This is a two-person game now. Surely one of us has to guess heads and the other tails. All right, all right. It all comes down to luck, after all. I'll take tails. Ooh, looks like Rex Lapis has smiled upon me today after all. <laughs> Thank you for the tea, Albert. You're on luck streak today. I bet you wish to raise the stakes now, huh? 
Look at you getting so giddy over some chump change. It's like you've never gambled with real money before, my old man. That's a real rush, I'm telling you. This is nothing by comparison. In fact, I'm starting to get a little bored. Well, um, in that case, would you care for another game? Sure. Let's up the stakes a little this time. Shall we say 50,000? Oh, maybe that's a little on the high side. What, 50,000? But that's just a single day's guide pay for you. All right. I'll bet tails. Great, then I'll bet heads. No take backs. <clears throat> heads. Tails. Oh, how unfortunate. I shouldn't have gotten greedy. After all, in the long run, gambling is always a losing game. <laughs> 50,000 more, oh, my goodness. Uh, Albert, I'm terribly sorry, but as it happens, I forgot to bring my coin purse with me today. Uh, could you perhaps take this 50,000 out of my guide fees? Uh, call it an advance payment. That would make us even. Advance payment? <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid that's not my style. It'll have to be cash. Ha <laughs> this day, just getting better and better. Well, so be it. Fifty thousand. Um, let me see what cash I have on me. Mr. Bet is up fifty thousand more abuse from Just fifty thousand? That's not what we agreed on. Huh? No. What are you talking about? I think you'll find that our bet was for 50,000. No, it wasn't. The amount was one million. <sighs> one million? Are you insane? Come on now, Albert. Be serious. A million here and a million there might be all fun and games to you rich types, but to ordinary folk like myself, this is no laughing matter. I'm being perfectly serious. I know what I said, and what I said was one million mora. You're lying through your teeth. Hey, young man, you tell him. Did you hear him say one million at any point during our bet? Yeah, he said one million. Ah, uh, what the? I'm not deaf, you know. I swear I heard 50,000. Wait. Oh, I see. You two are in this together. I've never met either of you before today, and out of nowhere you suddenly roped me into betting over a coin toss, and now you're accusing me of owing you one million more. Ah, do you have any idea who you're trying to cheat? I know all the tricks in the book. I can't believe a couple of beginners like you managed to get this far. <laughs> But don't you try to celebrate just yet. You amateurs have a lot to learn about the art of the con. Do you really think that nobody else will have heard all the commotion we just made? All I need is one witness, and this little scheme of yours falls apart. Frauds! Frauds, I say! These two kids are trying to scam me out of my hard-earned mora! Hostess! Oh, hostess, come quickly! How pathetic. What is going on here? If you can't abide by our rules, you're not welcome at Yen Shang Tea House. I don't care what the issue is. You don't get to make a racket like that in here. Halberd! Fang! Wait, wait, don't throw me out! These two con artists are trying to steal my mora. You can't let them get away with it! Well, let's take this somewhere else. I don't want any of you disturbing the other guests. This table's ta- oh. Okay, you two. Care to explain yourselves? Gladly. He's making up completely spurious claims. We were betting Mora over a few coin tosses, and now he wants to back out. In the land of contracts of all places. 
He won 250,000 from me, then another 800,000 from the both of us. Now he's refusing to pay up the measly 50,000 that he lost in the final round. Okay, so after settling up, a total of one million more should have changed hands. Sounds plausible enough. Oh, it's a complete pack of lies. Hostess, if you don't believe me, ask anyone else in the tea house. These kids were so loud, I guarantee you everybody in that room knows the true story. Sorry to interrupt you all, but you're witnesses to the situation here. Is what Mr. Bai says true? Oh, thank goodness you're finally here. What took you so long? That old guy's been bragging about the mora he's won so loudly, I'm surprised the whole street didn't hear him. I was about to report him to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Leave me out of this. I want nothing to do with gamblers and scammers. Please, just bring me my check. Our new owner laid down the law not too long ago. We turn a blind eye towards casual games of dice, but there is zero tolerance for any explicit gambling with real mora. Return any winnings to the party you took them from, and we'll say that none of this ever happened. Otherwise, I'll have to bring in the Millilith, and I can assure you that they take a more hard line on this kind of thing than we do. Why should I have to give them any Mora? I don't have any Mora on me. Oh, but I think you do. Two investments, was it? One of them to the tune of exactly one million as it happens. Oh. And don't forget you still need to pay the tab. You... Wait... How did you... Halberd! Fang! There's a gentleman here that I'd really like you to meet. Please, please don't! I'll pay, all right? This was never your Mora to begin with. We'll be returning it to its rightful owner now. But he would just. We could call them and leave. They, they could get the. The medicine check to be just regular painkillers and arrest the guy as scammer. He would just scam somebody else. We can't have this discussion in front of the other customers. Please, step outside. There are no customers. What did you think, Captain Wu? Could you hear clearly from your corner on the second floor? Yes, everything. I... I can't thank you two enough. Wu... This was your doing, wasn't it? You and this monster planned the whole thing! Along with that blonde one. And all the customers on that floor were in on it too, weren't they? I know where you live, and I know what your wife looks like, and your pretty little daughter, too. You crossed the wrong man today! Who'd be scared of a crook like you? I'll take you on any day of the week. <laughs> well, let's see how long that false bravado of yours will last. Oh, look at that. He figured it out. Guess he's not as dumb as we thought. Don't you two get cocky either. Just you wait. I will hunt you down. My apologies for having to leave this question until you'd vacated the premises. But I couldn't have things escalate inside the tea house. I hope you can understand our position. I noticed that all the guests on the second floor were present before you took your seats, then left almost immediately after you did. Would I be correct in saying you were looking to set this man up? Wait, so you saw through it right away? Under normal circumstances, we would never tolerate a scheme like this taking place on our grounds, as it risks damaging our owner's reputation. However, I understand that our owner holds the Traveler in high regard, and must have good reasons for their actions. Still, Who's I would appreciate an explanation, if only so that I can answer to the owner. Ah, as I thought. When you're operating on someone else's turf, you run the risk of clashing with the master of the house. Thankfully, we considered that possibility before going ahead with our plan. Over to you, brave hero. You're the one with the connections in Liyue. It's your time to shine. 
Every convo I have check the wool. Okay. I understand the situation now. It goes without saying that I have no wish to stand in the way of your chivalrous deeds. I'll report everything you told me to our owner. Who is the owner? I don't really know. Feel free to find me again if you need it for explanation. Well, Captain Wu, remember what I promised you? What do you think? Angry and frustrated enough for you? I think delivers. Shame he didn't cry like Big Baby, though. Excuse me, coming through. Hmm. Is this the Mr. Bai you reported to us? Yes, that's him, all right. The one who scammed Captain Wu. You guys look well, too much wait, alike. Wait! Where's your evidence? Hmm? And Wu, you've already recovered your mora. I don't deserve to be punished twice for the same crime. You are punished. You can't You're talk your way out of this one. You're already suspected of defrauding multiple victims out of smaller amounts, and the combined total meets the threshold for a conviction. If it turns out you're guilty in this case, too, it'll only add to your sentence. Does the plaintiff have any witnesses? If so, we'd really appreciate if they could come with us and provide a testimony. Here, sir, I am to give testimony. You got tangled up in this, too, huh? In that case, please come with me. Your witness statements will play a crucial role in helping to move this case forward. Don't worry, we won't take up too much of your time. And you, sir, can stop twiddling your thumbs. You're coming with us, too. Hey, keep your hands off me. I'll cooperate, I'll cooperate. S stop manhandling me. <laughs> the military takes the, the call me. You get this when you return. Thank you so, so much, the both of you. I really don't know how I could ever begin to repay you. Well, I have an idea. We originally came here to do some sightseeing. Anywhere you'd recommend we go before the end of our trip? Let me think. Now, where would I want to go? Hey, are either of you interested in a fishing trip? Sounds fun to me. Let's go. Oh, well, actually, this take him all. The wind rises. Following me. Yeah, I don't know. That was always too convoluted when we could just have <sighs> too slow. Had the mid one middle leaf around the corner. Swan Fury should get him in flagrant. <sighs> Is that his boat? Well. This was certainly an eventful end to my trip. It wouldn't have been possible without you. Or my lucky coin, of course. I'm just glad that nothing went wrong with it. I tossed the coin. <laughs> wouldn't be much of a lucky coin if it had. Besides, I already taught you how to become attuned to it. Hmm. You still need some practice to master the technique, but luckily it decided to play nice and spare us any more complications. How do you control it, anyway? Hmm, a better question to ask might be, what do I do to make this coin happy to work with me and show me whichever side I wish? My answer would be that I tell the coin a joke every time I toss it into the air. If it finds my joke funny, then it cooperates with me. Of course, this whole arrangement hinges on a pre-existing amount of trust between the two of us. I can't just get any strange coins to listen to me. He caught us off guard when he insisted on taking the second coin toss. Yeah, I was a little surprised when he unwittingly called out our trick coin, but it didn't matter. A good gambler always keeps their options open. You have to have a contingency plan for when the odds are against you. So when I went to the counter, I marked a regular coin as well as my trick one. That safely avoided any risk of him finding out about the trick coin. But it also meant that we wouldn't be able to control the result of that round. But hey, what does it matter? The fact that he made things a little more challenging only made it all the more exciting to watch him slowly but surely fall into our trap. Especially listening to him warn us about the possibility of a rigged coin right as we were scamming him. That was my favorite part. As long as I chose the same bet as him, and you bet the opposite to me, it was always going to end up with him paying. <laughs> Unless, of course, he'd had some other tricks up his sleeve that we hadn't thought of. <laughs> then things would have gotten really interesting. 
You two are genuinely the smartest people I've ever met. No. I'm no intellectual, so I would never have been able to come up with a plan like this. Even when you described it to me, I only understood parts of it. Never change your good nature. How can arts get conned themselves sooner or later? Well, I may not be the smartest guy around, but one thing I do know is this. Um, one should always return tenfold the help that they've received from others. We they were just more. ordinary acquaintances. You had no reason to help me as much as you did. If there's anything I can ever do for you in the future, um, anything at all, please let me know. You can always count on me. I guarantee it. Oh? You seem agitated. Are you worried about owing me yet another favor? <laughs> there are two kinds of people who owe me favors. One is my friends, and the other my informants. My informants have to fulfill whatever requests I make of them, no questions asked. The question is, which kind of person do you want to be? I... Ah, and you're torn again. Too afraid to ask to be my friend, but also daunted by the dangers inherent in becoming my informant. Well, it's okay, because I just thought of a fun and easy way to get us out of this impasse. Let's do a coin toss. This is the regular coin I prepared for the contingency plan when I was borrowing a pen from the bar. Not the lucky one that does what I tell it to. If it's heads, we're friends. But if it's tails, you're at my beck and call. <laughs> May the Lord of Geo decide. So, was it heads or tails? What do you think? What does your heart tell you? Can I just put the coin back in his pockets? I understand now. You have my most sincere gratitude. Uh, <clears throat> no, that's a little too formal. What I'm trying to say is, here, your fishing rods, my friends. Hmm. You want to be my informant or my friend? Uh, uh. Wow, this the line wasn't that long, but yeah, it was the dialogue there. It took a while. Uh. Did I kill something here? Back there. Don't even remember what was the options there. The wind rises. Behold. Gundafar, we are in the middle of a war. A matter of utmost imp. Huh. Outdoor theater. Looks fun. Hmm. Wanna stop, Mr. Show? Actually. That? Yes. Mm. I saw some guards do a musical performance when I was traveling with their caravan in Sumeru. They were desert dwellers. So are these actors. <laughs> and I think I actually recognize one of them. Come on. Let's go watch. Just right at the beginning. This will be a long line, won't it? Your Majesty, not only has God bestowed the throne upon you, but your beloved son, Prince Kubad, has led our brave warriors to victory against Frasyav's army. Which God? His men have laid down their arms and fled. Frasyav's brazen ambition is no more. He has bowed his head and now presents to your majesty an offering of treasures and hostages, as well as a plea for peace. My king, this battle has finally restored the dignity of our people. Moreover, with Frasyav's offer of land comes the opportunity to expand our borders, as your majesty so greatly wishes. His Highness the Prince and I believe this peace settlement will be a great boon to our nation. 
It is for this reason alone that I have removed my armor and made haste back to our halls from the front lines. My king, what say you to this proposal? Ah, it's the tale of Prince Kubad. Ever heard this one? Nope, never feels like we missed a lot of backstory. Don't worry, I still remember the general plot. Let me fill you in on the background while the king deliberates. The main characters are the brilliant Prince Kubad and his war-hungry father, King Kabus. The one talking to the king right now is Gundafar, the prince's tutor. When the prince was young, the king was deceived by a malicious rumor that the prince had mistreated his stepmother. He demanded that the prince walk through a blazing fire to prove his innocence. Miraculously, the prince emerged unscathed, thus proving his innocence. But the seeds of doubt had already been sown in the king's mind. Now uneasy in the presence of his mistrustful father, the prince requested to be sent away to the battlefield where he would fight against Frasyov's army. That's the enemy general we heard them mention just now. This is the part where the prince has won the war and decided to forge a peace with the rival nation. He wrote a letter recommending peace to his father. Oh, it looks like the king's made up his mind. Let's keep watching. Frasyov lost because he did not have the blessing of God. Our God will always watch over us and punish our enemies. Once the bells of war have begun to toll, they shall not cease until the blood of our enemies fills the land. There can be no victory until the last enemy soldier has fallen. If Kubad still wishes to be my son and hold the intaglio I bestowed upon him as proof of his royal blood, then he must obey my command. Your Majesty, I must caution that a nation destroyed is not a fallen city writ large. Now, the loss of one city strikes fear into the hearts of our enemies, compelling them to accept defeat and cede land in exchange for peace. If, however, we insist on bringing a whole nation to its knees, then so long as a single person is left standing, they will see us as their sworn enemy and one day return to us tenfold the pain that we have inflicted on their nation and family. My king, a people is to their nation as wild grass to the open prairie. Though we burn down the whole field and spare not one blade of grass, roots continue to grow unseen beneath the surface. Come the spring, it is all but inevitable that fresh green shoots will rise up from the ashes. Cease, Gundafar. Your mind grows dull in your old age, filled with naive delusions. We shall have no more need of you on the battlefield. As for my son Kubad, I will summon him back to the capital, so he may be tried by a court-martial. What are you saying, my noble king? Why must you mistrust your own flesh and blood, and sink ever deeper into the blight of hatred? When he was falsely accused, you once doubted his honor, and made him walk through a raging fire. Did he not prove himself worthy by emerging unharmed from the flames? Now you would turn me away, when I seek only to provide the wisdom of counsel. What is the justification for this? The justification is that my word, not yours, is the law of the land. Cease and be gone, Gundafar, so you may spend the rest of your days with your wife. What has become of the king that I served with my life? Fanaticism has robbed him of all reason and wisdom. Peace is surely the most favorable path for our nation, yet he refuses to accept it. I must think of a way to seize control of the army back from the hands of my wayward son, that they might continue the fight to the end. Perhaps the first task should be this. I shall send a loyal contingent of warriors to eliminate Frasyov and the hostages he has sent to our palace. Brilliant acting, Darbil. <laughs> I saw you approaching us in the middle of the scene. I was worried that my performance would be subpar and you'd think I was just making a fool of myself. Not at all. Far from it. Actually, let me introduce you. This is Darbil, the actor for King Kabus. When we first got to know each other, he was still a guard for one of the merchant caravans. Seems like he's now made the switch to full-time acting. Hello. Nice to meet you. 
Any friend of Kaya's is a friend of mine. To be perfectly honest, I wasn't making all that much as a mercenary. It felt right to me to get away from the danger and live a more stable life. I was already pretty good at telling stories, so I just recruited a few friends and started performing shows all over the country. Full disclosure, we had to put this little stage together using whatever wood and cloth we could borrow. It's really low budget. Anyway, we're all good enough at acting to get through the motions, but none of us are any good at coming up with a script. Everything we tried to write just sounded off somehow. So I got a student from the academia to adapt an old story I knew to make it more appealing to our audience. What do you think? Passable? I could tell that you've had someone tighten up the lines. They turned out very nicely. Ah, uh, that's good. Well, as you can see, even now, we still don't have much of an audience. Don't suppose you'd be interested to see the rest of the show? Sure, why not? I don't have anything pressing lined up. And I don't think the Traveler does either. Tickets for two, please. How much would that be? <laughs> There's no need for tickets. You could just get some food from Jafar Tavern. We've worked out an arrangement with them. We've actually found a sponsor for this performance, too. He's not too happy about the poor turnout, though. I doubt we'll be able to keep him for the next performance. A real pity. But what can you do, huh? Darbil Asgar still hasn't shown up for the next scene. We should get his costume and sword out so they'll be ready to go the moment he gets here. My apologies. I have to get ready for the upcoming scene. I'll see you from the stage. Mm. Are there food? What's going on? Where in the Seven Nations is that little twerp? The next scene is about to begin. Talk to the bartender if you want a drink. God only knows. It's not the first time he's done this, either. <clears throat> huh. Too slow. Would you two like to order some food? What can I get you? If you're looking for recommendations, today's special is the tandoori roast chicken. Are those play ah, cakes? Bear with us a moment. We're just going to take a look at the menu. How did you become friends with Arbu? I was at Port Ormos discussing some business opportunities, and some crook was trying to pull a fast one on me. Darbil took pity on me and politely asked him to make himself scarce. He's a good guy. A decent storyteller, too. Quite an interesting character. But there's a lot of fun to be had if you hang around interesting people doing interesting things. Especially if you're in the company of an interesting friend. That's my secret formula for staying in a good mood. Try it out sometime. You'll see what I mean. Thanks for waiting. We're ready to order now. We'll take you up on that tandoori roast chicken. And let's throw in some desserts, too. One each of the rose custard, that tulumba, and the patisara pudding, please. That should see us through the show. Your food's on the way. It'll just be a few more minutes. We've got good seats. Close to the stage, but also not too crowded. But you're we can watch the show as stage. we eat. If I remember correctly, the next scene should focus on the prince. But I won't spoil it for you. You have to experience it for yourself. Do you like the story? Sounds like the story has made quite an impression on you. You could say that. It's always stayed with me because it's hammered home a cruel but realistic truth. People do not choose where and when to be born, yet the circumstances of their birth define the choices that they will have for the rest of their life. Here you are. The check's on the table, too. Just call me over when you're ready to settle up. No need. I'll pay up front. Here. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, but this is too generous. Call it a token of my gratitude for the excellent service. The food all smells wonderful, too. So please pass my compliments to the chef. Well, the Thank cooking. you so much, sir. <sighs> Let's dig in, traveler. 
We enjoyed Feast with Kaya. Hey, Kaya. Uh, I'm so sorry. But the actor who plays the prince has run into some difficulties and won't be able to make it. We can't do the rest of the show without him, so... I'm really, really sorry, but we'll have to call the show right here. Uh, it's too bad that we won't see the end of the story. Can you use an understudy? You can kind of feel it for him. Ooh, that would be fun. I wouldn't say no. I was just kidding. I wasn't. Darbil, would you lose any income if I were to mess this up? Not really. I mean, there's not much of an audience here anyway. I wouldn't want to take too much of your time, though. Ah, don't worry about that. I like to be spontaneous now and then. Spice things up a little. Let me think. Well, you already know the story, so you just need to memorize a few lines. Ha! <laughs> you know what? This might actually work! Ah, wait, but Kuban has a specific costume he's supposed to wear, and there's no way you'd fit into it. Switching actors is one thing, but wearing street clothes on stage would really ruin the immersion. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. Well, are quite good unusual. thing that I've actually got a costume with me. It goes pretty well with your stage, too. You're kidding. Can you show it to me? Sure. If you can show me the way to your changing room. You're just carrying it's around. It's in the restaurant. Follow me. This is supposed to happen after that. That quest? I thought the hangout was before our vaca vacation. Gotta say, I think I actually look pretty dapper in this. It's a pity I don't have many opportunities to wear it in public. Just a show off, but it do look pretty good. Never knew you were so vain. Uh oh, not a fan of me as a prince? I'll have to act my heart out so you'll be too dazzled to make any digs. Kaya, here's your script for the next scene. It's not too long, but you also don't have very long to prepare. Do you think you can memorize your lines in time? Only one way to find out. Okay, the actors briefly rehearsed the scene. Okay, I think we've covered all your lines and movements on stage. You haven't had long to prepare, so don't worry about forgetting your lines. We'll remind you. All right, I'm good to go. Great, then let's get this show on the road. General Kubat, son of Kabus, the fate of this battle is clear. I beg you, please spare my few remaining men. They no longer have the strength to fight back. Frasyav, though you now lead only the husk of a once mighty army, I have no desire to crush your dignity. Even your most savage warriors have no desire to see further bloodshed, and none among your ranks have opposed these peace talks. Nevertheless, I must hear it from you one final time. General Frasyov, do you agree to sign a treaty in good faith and commit from this day forth to peace between our nations? With my army in ruins, I am in no position to do otherwise. But on this, I give you my word. Yes, let us end our hostilities and send our surviving men home to their families. We share the desire to lay down our arms for good and liberate our hearts from the dirge of hatred. Then as God above is our witness, by the authority vested in me by this intaglio of King Kabus, I hereby declare that I will spare your hostages and what remains of your army. May peace be restored to this land and may these fields of war become a place where crops grow aplenty. My tutor, Gundafar, has already made haste to my father, the king, with the recommendation of a truce. It is my sincere hope that he will see that peace as a path to prosperity and grant me his blessing. Prince Kubad, your name is renowned throughout your land and ours. I will place my hope in your words. 
One will find on a battlefield no master of ceremonies, nor the paper on which a treaty may be signed. In their absence, let us raise our weapons and swear an oath. I, Kubad, son of Kabus, hereby pledge protection to you and all of your kin. May the oceans be stained red with my blood if I am ever to renounce this oath. Wow, your friend is so dreamy. He's not a real prince by any chance, is he? Maybe. Hey, we're not Rishana, sure yet. You don't want to miss this. The good looking guy who left that huge tip is acting on stage with Darbel's troop. <laughs> Darville's one lucky man. I return, your highness. I hope I'm not too late. Have you already promised peace to Frasyov? Nay, I am not so rash as to preempt my father's blessing. I promised only what I could so far, the safety of his kin. My child, I must share with you the gravest news. Kabus has become blinded by fanaticism and hatred, and will stop at nothing to vanquish every last man under Frasyov's lead. How can this be? You mean to say that my father has rejected our proposal for peace? He has indeed. I urged him to reconsider, and for this I was rebuked and dismissed from his service. But far stricter punishment than this awaits you, should you return home with your troops. Please heed my warnings, dear child. I dare not imagine what unspeakable atrocities your father intends to commit. Nay, the truce must stand. I cannot renounce my oath. How can man claim to stand above beast without remaining true to his word? The masses have grown weary of death and conflict in both our nation and theirs. Are we all now to bend to his will, and massacre countless more, to satisfy a desire that is his alone? When I departed my beloved home to fight in a foreign land, I did so to honor his wishes, and for my duty to our people. Alas, is this fate's grand design? Uh... Is this fate's grand design? Kaya! The next line is, Alas, is this fate's grand design, that I should spend the rest of my days in a foreign land, till I am laid to rest in a grave far from home? Must it be so? Huh? Wait, that's not part of the script. Kaya, did you not hear me? My dear audience, I ask you this. Do you believe in fate? If fate decreed that your life was to end in tragedy, what would you do? What's that? Why did he just throw the prop to me? Seems like improv with the audience. Guess I should play along. I will bravely face my fate. I will challenge my fate and rise above it. Oh? <laughs> then so must it be. Yes, so must it be. I shall discard this intaglio and rid myself of the shackles of fate. Wait, but that's not... My dear prince, do you intend to betray your father and abandon your heritage? Fate means to send the machinations of war to every corner of the land, to fan the flames of conflict till they engulf the entire world. Fate would see my sword tainted with the blood of innocence that the bright banner of my homeland might fly in every nation known to mankind. But I shall not bow to the will of fate. I am no pawn in heaven's plan. Bravo! Where did this guy come from? Is he one of the new hires? Hey, shut up! Stop interrupting! I, Kubad, will spend the rest of my days in a foreign land till I breathe my last in a place far from home. Oh, at least he brought it back in the end. Prince Kubad, my child, there is no need to be rash. Please bring at least your fortune and the retainers who will always be loyal to you. Gundafar, my dear mentor, you have always been like a father to me. It brings me only anguish to bid you farewell. But I must walk this path, or freedom dies by my hand. 
Goodbye, my tribe and kin. Farewell, sweet land of my birth. Goodbye, my child. The now sizable audience bursts into applause. The show is pretty good. Are you guys professional? Oh, was it? Kind of was part of it. Hmm. I wonder if I should go strike up a conversation with him. No, I don't want to talk to you. Bulletin. Oh, I can talk to you. Ooh, it's Prince Kubad. Could I please get your autograph? Why, certainly, ma'am. Thank you. I'll just go find a pen. Good show, Kai. I want autograph too. Just an autograph? Well, you can get one of those at any time. Acting is quite fun. If there ever came a day when I left the Knights of Favonius, I think I might go into acting full time. Darby, could you introduce me to this young man? Ah, my apologies, Master Toos. I somehow missed you in the crowd earlier. <laughs> I was some distance away. I just came over near the end after I noticed the large crowd gathered around the stage. The performance was outstanding across the board. I knew that the poor turnout over the past few days was just bad luck. It was only ever a matter of time before you hit it big. The improvised section was particularly good. I think you could include some improvisation as a staple in future performances. As for the prop he threw, no need to get it back. It's fairly cheap anyway. Thank you, sir. And a big thanks also to our wonderful prince. Had Kaya not agreed to fill in, we might have disbanded right on the spot. Kaya, was it? Well, young man, I must say, you've made quite the impression on me. My caravan is always loaded with the finest food and wines. You're welcome to visit at any time. Thank you for the invite, sir. But I'm afraid I've reached the end of my time at Sumeru. I'm sure that my friends and family in Mondstadt must be missing me terribly. <laughs> well then, consider it an open invitation. Once you've been bitten by the travel bug, my friend, you'll be getting itchy feet again before too long. My door is always open. If you're ever interested, please ask Darbil to reach out to me. Darbil, we can continue discussions on the sponsorship once you've wrapped up today's show. I'm going back to the inn. Thank you so much, Master Toos. I'll see you shortly. Seriously, Kaya, thank you for bailing me out again. You're a good guy. May the gods bless you. You know, you should stay for a few more days. I owe you a meal at the very least. Darbil, Asgar is back. He lost track of time playing Genius Invocation TCG. You've got to sort him out. Genius Invocation again? Ah, oh, that does it. That kid's not getting away with it this time. Now please excuse me, Kaya. I will be right back. Sure, there's no rush. Mm. Okay, I think they're all gone. Let's slip away now while we can. Why? Leave quite leave, Kaya. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So I here anymore. The wind rises. All right, this should be far enough. Don't think they'll find me here. Where to can sign some autographs? Did you want to stay for free meal sometime? People were starting to expect a lot of things that I didn't sign up for. Besides, the missing actor is back now. Darbil shouldn't be needing me to stand in again. I don't mind socializing, but compared to chatting over food and drink, I much prefer just going wild on the stage. What about you? Did you enjoy the show? No, I thought your performance was intriguing. I was expecting that improv section. Mostly, I was curious to know what was going through your mind on stage. Oh? I was expecting a lengthier critique, but you've thrown the question right back at me. Sneaky. <laughs> All right, I'll rise to your challenge. Let me think. All the world's a stage and all the people merely players. 
Does that answer your question? Perhaps there's an inept god out there deciding everyone's fates, much like the academia student drafting Darbil's scripts. Hmm. Yeah, inept is a good word for it. <laughs> Honestly, it might even be a little too civil to describe a god who turns fathers against their sons and is bent on endless warmongering, don't you think? Anyway, that's exactly why actors need to wake up and realize they don't have to follow the script. There's nothing to stop them from following their gut and making it up as they go along. Do you really believe that? Does this Neptu God really exist? Oh, my dear traveler, please don't take me too literally. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. The God is just a figure of speech. The real point I'm making is about the actors. Everyone, you and I included, is both an actor and a member of the audience. If you don't like the script, just walk off the stage and join the audience. You always have a choice. That sounds difficult. I'm not sure if fully on this stage. A little too obtuse? <laughs> well, don't dwell on it. It's nothing worth losing sleep over. I was just thinking aloud. Relax. Be yourself. Do your thing. That's all I'm really trying to say. When I did my little bit of audience interaction back there, you had no time to prepare. You had to just say what you thought in the moment. I think those spontaneous thoughts are often the most authentic. And that's why I liked your answer. You're still holding on to the intaglio I threw you from the stage, right? Keep it. Think of it as a souvenir from my improvised performance. It's been the most fascinating day, hasn't it, little birdie? Oh, this one I got to keep. Uh, questions, answers. So it must be. Yes, so it must be. Now we got them all. Yeah. And there is. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got the I got already the one for today. You think I've got a sharp Bye. tongue? I uh, just tell it like it is. Oh, I think this one was longer than the previous one was. What was the previous one? If someone can't handle it. Maybe that. Hmm. Yeah, this one has been a while. Yeah, but I think this one was quite longer than those three here. Alright. Uh, next version should roll out tomorrow or afterwards. Yeah, I think maintenance will be tomorrow. There's no such thing as pure uh, freedom in this world. No, okay. Wait a Even little the bit wind cannot blow on forever. <laughs> Wait a little bit before going back to Genshin. And I'm out.